10 winning 18, the Pac-10 16, but it's been for the West Coast fans the victories in the last decade. And Michigan trying to do something about it today. There's the grand marshal of this year's tournament, actor Lauren Green, better known as Ben Cartwright for his television days on Bonanza. A native of Canada, Mr. Green has migrated from the Ponderosa today to Pasadena. And with him is the President Miller Davidson, and in the stands already, the queen of this 1981 Tournament of Roses Festival, Leslie Kim Kawai. She's following a tradition of her own. Her aunt rode in the 1916 parade. She's the first Japanese American to be so honored as the queen of this tournament. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Enberg, and Happy New Year. What a great way to start this new year. This granddaddy is just rocking with the colors of the maize and blue of Michigan and the purple and gold of the University of Washington. And it's a special treat to share this experience with you, with our colleague Merlin Olson. I have a feeling this is going to be a very big year for you, big guy. Thank you, Dick. I hope it's a big year for all those who are tuned in to watch us, too. You know, you talk about New Year's Day, and we all feel that positive flow, that electricity. And for one man in this stadium today, Bo Schembechler, the coach of Michigan, he certainly hopes that it'll be happy for a change. Boy, you got that feeling watching him help open the show. Bo has never won the final game of a Michigan season. Great record that he has. I'm sure that that taste had lingered in his mouth. He'd love to finish this season and start the year 1981 with a win today. And one of the coaches, Don James, who handed Bo Schembechler some bad New Year's Day medicine. Don James beat him here three years ago as a big underdog. Let's go to the University of Michigan. What impresses you most about the Wolverines? Three things. First, a defense that's really grown up. In fact, in the last 18 quarters of the season, they only allowed three points. And Bo will tell you that they're here today because of their defense. The second thing, they have a huge offensive line. One of the biggest I've seen. Bigger than most pro teams would have. And they, of course, established the running game, established ball control. We're going to keep an eye on them. And the third would be uh, Anthony Carter, would be my You're guess. You've got to mention <laughs> Anthony Carter. Anthony, the most exciting player on the field today. And believe me, our eyes and the eyes of the Washington defense going to be on that man all day. He'll be easy to follow. He wears number one. He's the smallest man of the starters on the field today. So for those of you who like the underdog or to root for the little guy, Anthony Carter is a mighty big little man for the University of Michigan. Another interesting story is the two quarterbacks in the game, John Wangler of Michigan and Tom Flick of Washington. They not only look a like they're both fifth year seniors they both threw the same number of touchdown passes this year they both have the same number of career touchdown passes we can go on and on well Tom Flick I think the key for Washington a hot and cold player he's a streak passer he needs a hot streak today he needs to chew up that Michigan defense a little bit Flick will have uh, help from the second best punt return team in the nation Washington second only to Georgia every coach I talked to about this Washington team talked about their special teams their kicking game and I'm sure that that kicking game, which is excellent in all phases, is going to have a big impact on the game today. Now the national anthem, the University of Michigan Band. Principles, the starting seniors for Washington and Michigan in a moment. City Hall, Pasadena, California. Its unique early California architecture featured on the game tickets for this, the 67th edition of the Rose Bowl. The granddaddy of them all. Now the players and the coach of the champions of the Big Ten. The Michigan Wolverines. I'm Bo Schembechler, coach of the Michigan Wolverines. Welcome to the 1981 Rose Bowl game. 
On offense, every one of Michigan's interior linemen made at least one All Big Ten team. George Zulja, senior, center, Palis Park, Illinois. I'd like to thank the Lord for making this all possible. And hello, mom and dad. Hi, I'm Kurt Becker, senior, offensive guard from Aurora, Illinois. Hi, my name's John Powers. I'm a senior from Oak Park, Illinois. I uh, play offensive guard, and I'd like to say hello to my newborn niece, Maggie. The Wolverine receivers, Alan Mitchell and All-American Anthony Carter. Hi, I'm Alan Mitchell. I'm a senior, split in from Detroit, Michigan. Merry Christmas, V, Grandma, Father Donaher, and the rest of the family. Hi, my name is Anthony Carter, sophomore, wide receiver, Riviera Beach, Florida. Here's the number two all-time Michigan passer and three rushers all in the top nine in conference play. Butch Woolfolk, junior tailback, hometown, Westfield, New Jersey. My name's Larry Ricks. I'm a sophomore tailback. I'm from Barberton, Ohio. I'd like to thank the Lord for making this moment possible. Hi, my name is Stan Edwards, senior fullback from Detroit Kettering, Detroit, Michigan. I'd like to say hello to my grandparents, Albert and Katie Mason. I'd like to say hello to everybody back in Detroit who made me come this far in life. You're beautiful people. John Wangler, senior, quarterback, Royal Oak, Michigan. The awesome Michigan defense, best in the Big Ten, did not allow a touchdown in the last four and a half games. Mike Turkovac, senior, defensive tackle from Austintown, Ohio. I'd like to wish all the people in Austintown a happy new year, especially my best friend, Winnie. Good afternoon. My name is Mel Owens. I'm a senior at the University of Michigan. I play outside linebacker. I'm from DeKalb, Illinois. I'm Andy Canavino, senior. Co-captain, middle linebacker, hometown Cleveland, Ohio. This year's top priority, improve the kicking game. Hi, my name is Ali Hajashik. I'm a sophomore place kicker from Arlington, Texas. I'd like to wish everybody back in Arlington a happy new year. I'd especially like to say hello to my girlfriend, Michelle Blondin, and my best friend, Marty Nelson. Number five in the nation, the maize and blue of Michigan. Now let's meet the players and coach of the University of Washington Huskies, the champions of the Pac-10. Hi, I'm Coach Don James of the Washington Huskies. I'd like to wish all of our Washington fans in the Northwest a very happy new year. The Huskies, like Michigan, were also 9-2 on the season. Their tight end led the team in receptions, the offensive line dominated by seniors. My name's Mike Riley. I'm a center, senior center from Federal Way, Washington. And I'd like to say hi to my grandparents, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fred Twist from Federway, and thank everybody for allowing me to play here today. Hi, I'm Mike Curtis, a senior offensive guard at the University of Washington, majoring in speech communications education, and I want to say hi to my mom and family, and I want to thank God. Kurt Marsh, senior, Snohomish, Washington, offensive tackle. I'd like to say hi to everybody back home, especially Grandma Marsh and uh, my name is Randy Vanderveer. I'm from Anaheim, California. I'm an offensive right tackle for the University of Washington. I'm a speech major. And I'd like to give a special thanks to my brother Tim for all his loyal support. And glory be to God. My name is David Bale, senior tight end from San Marino, California. I'd like to say hi to all my friends and relatives and a number 11. In the backfield, a 60% passer complemented by a powerful fullback and a clever outside runner. Hi, my name is Kyle Stevens. I'm a tailback from San Jose, California, and I'd like to say hi to all my friends in San Jose. Hi, my name is Tucson Tyler. I'm a senior, a position fullback, hometown Oceanside, California. Tom Flick, senior, quarterback from Bellevue, Washington. I'd like to say hi to my mom and dad who are at home right now. I miss your company, but we're home soon. Now the Washington defense, where three solid seniors provided the mortar in an otherwise young but vastly improved unit. Hi, I'm Brett Gagliardi. I'm a senior starting outside linebacker from Burien, Washington. My name is Jerry McLean, senior inside linebacker from Snohomish. I'd like to say hi to my girlfriend, Marita, and to dedicate my game to my grandfather. Hi, my name is Ken Gardner. I'm a senior strong safety. My hometown is from Seattle, Washington. A strong point, the Husky kicking game. Hi, my name's Rich Camarillo. I'm a senior punter from Peak Rivera, California. From Seattle, the Washington Huskies. Beat Michigan!
So you've met the players for the Wolverines and the Huskies. They're waiting for their arrival and of course a giant roar from this crowd as soon as they make an appearance. The captains are out with the officials and soon we'll have the coin toss. Michigan played in its first Rose Bowl in the inaugural game in 1902 and shut out Stanford 49 nothing. Washington's first trip to Pasadena was 1924 and they tied Navy at 14. It's interesting there have been only three ties in the history of the Rose Bowl and this is the 67th game. This is a moment as a player Merlin Olson must be the toughest time of all. I think the waiting just having to wait for that first kickoff the butterflies are intensified. The strange thing that happens Dick is that the body sensitivity increases until you feel everything just magnified 10 or 15 times. It's really a strange time and it doesn't leave you until you get out into the game and get your first good hit. And here comes the University of Washington. Nine and two on the season, six and one in the conference. The Huskies, despite the problems in the Pacific Ten with five teams ineligible, were the legitimate Pacific Ten champion. Had all ten been eligible, it still would have been Washington here today. And now the Wolverines, for the first time, you can spot the maize and blue helmets as they come through the portal down to our lower right. The Wolverines, who closed with a mad dash, shutting out their opponents in terms of touchdowns in four and a half games, allowed only a field goal to Ohio State in the finale. The defense number one in the conference. And their fans eager to give them a proper entry as they come on this magnificent field. Never been in better shape. I think the colors today are so intense. I the feeling of football in this stadium right now is very, very special. I don't think I've ever felt a more intense crowd. Dick. And of course, a typical Chamber of Commerce day, and it started this morning. It was so warm this morning for the parade. Those normally bundled under heavy blankets and coats did not even need a jacket at 8 this morning. And here are the Wolverines. will escort the captains to the center of the field for the coin toss. Don James celebrated his 48th birthday yesterday. So many likenesses between the two quarterbacks and the two coaches today. James and Bo Schembechler, both 48. Both went to Miami to play. Miami of Ohio for Schembechler. Miami of Florida for the quarterback Don James. And Bo Schembechler, very interesting point, as Merlin pointed out, has never finished a Michigan football season with a victory. And this is his 13th chance or actually 12th chance today. The referees the today, the referee, referee is Bill Love of Portland, Oregon. Dan Davey, the umpire from Batavia, Illinois. Headlinesman John Jones of Portland. Line judge Ed Marisich of Calumet Park, Illinois. Field judges Verl Sorgan of Fairfax, California. And Tom Klein, the back judge from Palisades, Heights, Illinois. From Michigan, Captain Canavino, number 41. Captain Lil Jeff, number 59. Gentlemen, shake hands. Michigan is the visitor today. We've got a coin. Heads is the head faced upward. Tails is the center backwards. You call it in the air. I'm going to catch it and turn it over. You've called heads. They've called tails. They've called tails. It is heads. It's your coin and your choice. They've chosen to receive. It's your choice of gold. You want to defend this side, please. Over there. Good ball game. Thank you. Now the Huskies of Washington will get the ball first at the goal to our left the northern goal. There is a slight breeze out of the south that will aid the team moving from right to left. Don James team nine and two. He is now the dean of the Pacific Ten coaches as is Shem Beckler, the man in longest uh, employment in the Big Ten coaching crew. We'll tell you a little bit about the dangers of the coaching profession, Walter Dick. That's right, James in his sixth year, already the dean of the West Coast coaches. The maize in blue with sophomore kicker, Ali Haja Sheik, 
and he'll be kicking it deep. Anthony Allen has been returning most of the kicks this year for the Huskies. Nine and two identical records. Wolverines ranked fifth, and the Huskies down in the second 20, or second 10 in the top 20 in the country. One of the things we'll have to be alert for throughout this day in the big victory three years ago by the Huskies over Michigan, they really pulled out all the stops. They threw everything with the kitchen sink at Bo Beckler's team. And I think uh, you're liable to see some of that today. We may even see it on the opening kickoff or in the first series. 15, Anthony Allen and Aaron Williams, 91 deep for the Huskies. It's a long kick. Haji Sheik sends it halfway into the end zone where Allen will take the touchback. Set the Washington offense for you as Tom Flick, the senior from Bellevue, Washington, brings his team onto the field. Flick at quarterback will have at the running backs Desant Taylor and Kyle Stevens, two sophomore wide receivers, both excellent, Aaron Williams and Paul Scancy. The offensive line, Bale, the tight end, is the leading receiver with 36 catches. Vandeveer, Curtis, Riley, Carter, and Marsh, basically a senior offensive line for Washington. Two huge tackles. Both those tackles, 280 pounds. They are giants. Out of the eye from the 20-yard line. Stevens in motion. Flicks the throw. Dumps it to Stevens. And he gains three. Good coverage by the Wolverines. Andy Canavino, the captain and inside linebacker with a tackle. The defense for the Michigan Wolverines. A three-man front, Krigovac, a top player, Jeff Shaw, the only freshman starter, Winfred Carraway, Mel Owens on the outside, Paul Gergash and Andy Canavino inside, and Robert Thompson. He's got great speed, one of the outside backers. Second down and seven. Fleck. Tossing to Stevens out of bounds at the 25. It'll be third and five. Body, the cornerback, and Gergash, the linebacker, with a tackle. There are the deep four for the Wolverines, a young, small defensive unit that really matured during the course of the year. Carpenter and Body at the corners, Bostic, the biggest of the four, and a tough tackler, and Tony Jackson, a ball hawk, had free safety. I think we talked about the pressure on young Tom Flick. That defensive secondary has only allowed three touchdown passes this entire season. And they face some outstanding passing teams. Schleister at Ohio State, Campbell at California, a couple of quarterbacks. Flick the throw, it complete on a batted ball, and it's Williams down the sidelines. Williams has finally bounced out of bounds at the 23 yard line. And the key to the play is whether or not a Michigan player touched the ball. It went in and out of the hands of a Michigan and Washington player and back to Aaron Williams. If a Washington player touched it last, well, let's see. The ball actually is going to be like, rolled incomplete. It looked like a ball batted definitely by the defender back into the hands of the receiver. So the ball will come back for the penalty call, but it will not be on the, on the catch. It will be on the line of scrimmage. So a weird play on the third scrimmage opportunity for Washington of this game. Offensive pass interference, apparently the call. Yeah, we're going to get the signal after they might go off the penalty. It's going to be a 15 holding yards. Yep. Down to the 13 to the 12-yard line. Offensive oh. pass interference. Okay. Loss of down, fourth down. That is the toughest penalty that you can absorb in football. Loss of down plus 15 yards. Flick back, gets time to throw that football. There you see the bat. That ball batted back into the hands of the receiver, but as we told you, it will all be called back because of the pushing call earlier, offensive interference. So had it not been for the offensive interference, which we do not see in our replay, that would have been a long gainer for Washington. There was, it was a legitimate pass play otherwise. Well, and that's a, that's a costly problem there. They just had to call a timeout, literally waste a timeout, because I don't think the coaches realized they lost the down on that play. So it is fourth down and long, 18 yards for Don James Huskies and Rich Camarillo, their punter, averaging 38 yards a punt 
will kick it to the dangerous number one of Michigan, Anthony Carter. As we look at Carter, you'll notice he's one of the Wolverines. Well, on the uniforms they're wearing today, many of them do not have the numbers on their back, but they don't put his number or his name on his back because he uses the tearaway jersey. In fact, they have a dozen number ones available for the game today just in case. But only one Anthony Carter. That's right. <laughs> Damaria will kick from about his own two and hits a beauty. Fair catch, Carter at midfield. The Wolverines will take over in excellent field position at the 50-yard line after a 38-yard punt by Camarillo. The key, though, to that punt was Carter did not get a chance to return. For the Michigan Wolverines, it's John Wangler, senior quarterback, Stan Edwards, Butch Wolfolk, the running backs. Anthony Carter will be watching him closely, and Alan Mitchell, the wide receivers. We'll check the offensive line after this play. From midfield, Wangler. Incomplete to Butch Wolfolk. Broken up by number 40, Ken Driscoll. The offensive line for the University of Michigan, and as we indicated earlier, a huge five-man unit. Norm Betts is the tight end. Then you have Moransky, Becker, Lilja, Powers, and Paris. All five of those men, from tackle to tackle, made at least one All Big Ten team. And Lilja, some of the All-American teams, including the Walter Kemp All-American team. Second and ten. Oh, what a hit as the handoff to Stan Edwards and charging through the Huskies for a two-yard loss. It was Mark Giroux, the junior from Mercer Island, Washington. Big hit, an aggressive play by the defense. Edwards getting out, looking for some room, but he's hit deep in the backfield. You can't make any yardage when they get that kind of penetration on you. It'll be third down and 12. Fletcher Jenkins had a piece of that tackle as well. He's considered the top defensive lineman for the Huskies. Wangler forced to throw. Lots of time. Now chased off and dropped by Rusty Olson, number 64. Co-captain of the Huskies, and it's the defense of Washington that shines early. An interesting thing happens, Dick, to a team who's been ignored a little bit, and certainly if any of the four starting units have been downplayed. It's been the Washington defense. Maybe they got their nose up in the air a little bit and said, hey, don't talk bad about us. We're going to show you what kind of players we are. They've done that in this first series. Ray Horton, a solo safety, is Don Bracken, who set an all-time Michigan single-season punting mark, will kick at the rush on, and he gets it all. Short kick. Out of bounds, and Washington will come up with good field position at the 34-yard line. Uh, Washington gains on the exchange of kicks considerably, and we have a timeout in the Rose Bowl. We play two and a half minutes, and the Huskies and Wolverine. Nick Hanberg with Merlin Olson at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. No score, each team with a chance to move the ball. Both wound up with deficit yardage. First down, Huskies at the 34 yard line. Flick to Stevens, has a hole at the 40. He's all the way to the 50 yard first down of the game they mark it at the 49 15 yards for Washington Kyle Stevens is a very very important member of that Husky offense he's the lone tailback remaining since Ron Jackson was injured Dave Bale not only a good receiver but an excellent blocker right there blocking on number 53 Owens knocking him to the inside and then breaking out to look for a second block but Stevens made that play by jumping over the top Tucson Taylor, uh, Tyler also with an excellent uh, block on that play. Into Michigan territory goes Tyler. Senior from Oceanside, California, and a second team all Pac-10 member, Paul Gergesh, number 50 of Michigan, made the tackle. It'll be second down and six. Merlin Olson, let's recap again to set the scene for this game. For Washington to win, what do you think they have to do? I think Flick has to have a big day. He's throwing the ball very accurately here in the early going. And obviously their defense has to play well, but I think those are the keys. Second and six. Stevens in motion. Flick. Lots of time. Complete. Out of bounds goes Anthony Allen at the Michigan 27-yard line.
20 yards on the play. One of the questions I had in watching Tom Flick work in practice was, did he have the finesse to throw this pass, which is over the top, waiting until he has just the right opportunity, drops it over the defender, Carpenter, right into the hands of his receiver, Anthony Allen. That's a fine play, and they're going to have the first opportunity to score in this game. The two flankers for Washington, Scancy and Allen, had 61 catches between them. Stevens, big hole. And he gets to the 22-yard line, a gain of five as Owens and Canavino closed in. And Stevens, when it appeared, he'd get much more. Mike Riley with a great block. You can see why the Washington fans have really enjoyed watching this young man perform. He reads the opening quickly back to the inside. That's great acceleration. That's what you need when you get room inside, the ability to pop into the open quickly, and then you saw him extending for the extra yardage. He's impressive here in the early going. Second and five, Washington has driven to the Michigan 22. Flick. Open. First down is Ron Blacken, number 17. Washington is at the Michigan eight-yard line. One of the things we're seeing here early, that Washington offensive line is giving Flick time to look for the open receiver. And he's not wasting those opportunities. Ron Blacken, who survived a near-fatal auto accident five years ago. At 13 catches this year, he's placed Washington first and goal at the eight. Allen in motion. Tyler. Tyler to the four-yard line, and he just ran right over his own blockers. Canavino was in the midst of the defensive charge for the Wolverines, along with Keith Bostick and Brian Carpenter. Bo Schembechler said early this week that the thing that had impressed him about this Washington team was the way they balanced run and pass. And they've certainly done an excellent job of mixing the run and the pass on this drive. Tucson, La Overture Tyler is named after a Haitian hero, his family from Haiti. Second and goal at the four. Tyler gets only a yard, sacked by the center of that tough Michigan defense. Winfred Carraway, Mike Turgovac, Jeff Shaw and company. And now a tough call on third and goal at the three. Bo Schembechler. It's been a new personality for Glenn Bo Schembechler. Don James in his easy style celebrated his birthday yesterday. And you just see him a little hope in his face and that, that reaction. He has a new five-year contract with the Washington Huskies. He might trade that for a touchdown right here. <laughs> I bet he would. Up the middle, Stevens didn't get in. He stopped inside the one-yard line. It'll be fourth and goal, and a heavy decision for Don James. This is a little draw play, a little delay. They started to fake the pass and handed it late up inside to Stevens. Stevens looked like he was going to break free, but that's 95. Thompson, a man who put the final stick on him, had he not been in the road, it would have been on to the outside. Jeff Shaw there first, but it was Thompson really that kept him from sliding across that goal line. We're going for it, fourth and goal on the one. Nybauer, the second tight end in motion. Tyler! And it's a question of whether or not he was in the end zone, whether the ball had broken the plane of the end zone before that ball came loose. Goodness, two years ago, Michigan was beaten on a phantom touchdown. Charles White on a similar play, this time despite the fact the official on the far side signaled touchdown, the official on the near side said, no, sir, it was not a score. We talked about the gambling nature of the Washington Huskies. Don James doing exactly that going for broke, wanting the seven points. I think he knows he may not get that many chances to score. And there you saw the ball popping loose as the, uh, as, as the ball carry, that's Tyler, goes up over the top. The ball bounced cleanly loose. Good call by the officials. They were right on top of that. Michigan takes over at the one-foot line. And that's close to a safety. Very close. Rusty Olsen, 64, came out of the pile, shaking his fist. He thought he had two points as Butch Wolfe barely got back to the goal line. 
that's fine defense. Let's let's pat that Michigan defense on the back. We talked about their record. I don't think they've had a more critical series of downs this entire season than that series. Even though it's early in the game, you don't want to let a team off seven points ahead of you with a quick long drive if you can possibly help it. And they've dodged the bullet here. Michigan, a heavy favorite again today. Second and nine, a long nine, facing a stacked defense. It's Wolfuck to the six-yard line. And that'll bring up third and a short five. Rusty Olsen again slashing in to make the tackle. Let's uh, take a look at that Washington defense. Fletcher Jenkins considered, uh, well, they say next year as a senior will be a number one draft pick. Brian Stone, Rusty Olsen in the middle. Galliardi, Driscoll, McLean, and Stewart, the four linebackers. Ray Horton, he's very dangerous. Bill Stapleton at the corners. And Derek Harvey and Ken Gardner at safety. Third and five, Wangler from his own end zone, going for Carter. Incomplete and no flag. Their feet became entangled, and in the college ball, the officials, in fact, talked to us about that yesterday. Incidental trip with the legs entangled is not interference. It was a call, and exactly as you call it. Now watch their feet. They're both looking at the ball. They're both going for the ball and entitled to go after it. That's an accidental contact. Now, if you watch Carter, when he gets up, he doesn't question it. In fact, he slapped uh, Horton on the hand. Ray Horton, solo safety at midfield. He returned a punt 73 yards for a touchdown against USC in a big win in Los Angeles. That got Washington here. Don Bracken hits a low one. Ooh. It's returnable. Oh, takes a great bounce from Michigan. Horton all the way back to his 22. And now in trouble. Gets a couple of blocks to the 30. And out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Don Bracken, and we were watching him in practice. Most all of his kicks, when they hit the ground, take a forward roll, and he got a great bounce here. I think that's why they made the ball oblong. What looks to be a very bad kick and a very returnable kick suddenly becomes a great offensive weapon, defensive weapon, as it sends Horton way back to the back of his own field. He does some nifty running back there. Tacks it up the sideline to gain a little bit of yardage back. 73-yard kick by Bracken. That'll be the longest in his career. No score, Washington with the ball. No score, Michigan and Washington. First quarter, 6.41 remaining in this period. Washington with the ball at the 37-yard line. That was, by the way, a Rose Bowl record, the punt by Bracken. Flick brings Scancy in motion. Back to throw under a blitz. Tip. And almost intercepted by the Wolverines. Marion Body, number three, flying up to try to get that deflection. Unfinished business. Don Bracken's kick of 73 yards officially breaks the Rose Bowl record, long standing record that goes back to 1919 when Abra Abramson kicked a 72 yarder for Great Lakes Navy. Layden of Notre Dame and Coach of USC all with 72 yard kicks and Don Bracken's 73 yard punt, a new Rose Bowl mark. Dick Enberg, Marlon Olson, we're at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. We understand Georgia has defeated Notre Dame 17 to 10. Tyler bouncing off a tackler. The big guy is out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Here in this first quarter, Michigan stopped Washington deep in its own end. The punt to Michigan, they too were driven back, the kick back, and then Washington marched to a first and goal at the Michigan eight yard line. And on fourth and goal from the one, did not make it in. Some thought it a fumble, apparently has been ruled, just did not get in the end zone, was stopped on the one foot line was Tyler. Michigan took over, had to punt to Washington, what appeared to be a short kick, took a great roll, and Don Bracken, 73 yard punt, positioned Washington where they now own the football third and six. Flick, complete to Scancy at the Michigan 39. <laughs> 20 yards for Washington and a first down. I think we talked about the similarities between the two quarterbacks. One of the differences in the two quarterbacks, I think Flick has the stronger arm of the two, and he used that strength to deliver that ball right on target. This is a perfect pass. Again, something we talked about early, Lots of time to throw the football, but watch how accurately that ball is thrown. Oh, he dropped that right in a teacup. First down. Kyle Stevens. 
smothered at the Michigan 37 after a gain of two. One of the special players on this Michigan defense, number 41, Andy Canavino, leading tackler by a huge margin, almost two to one over anyone else. Canavino reads the play excellently, flows to the ball, and is, has a piece of the tackle along with Girgash, number 50, the other inside linebacker, who's the number two tackler, but he's their leader. Bo talks about him as the most important man on a very important defense. And following some Rose Bowl heritage, we'll tell you about that as time permits. On second and eight, flick to throw. Incomplete. He's shooting it for his wide receiver, Aaron Williams, cutting across the middle. Back to Canavino. His father also played here in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl for Ohio State and intercepted two passes in the 58 game when the Buckeyes beat Oregon 10 to 7. Canavino was a little upset that Woody Hayes didn't uh, offer him a scholarship with the Buckeyes, so he went to Michigan and has become a star with the Maize and Blue. Oh, you'd like to go back and rethink some of those decisions, wouldn't you? Can't always be right, can you? But he made a lot of right decisions. Third and eight. That's a triple left formation for Washington. Going deep. And no flag as Brian Carpenter had Aaron Williams well covered. Same kind of collision we saw moments ago. And again, the call, actually a no call, because it was ruled to be incidental and not intentional. Williams a flyer, and he has been their game-breaking receiver. Has not cut many more passes than anyone else, but they've often been deep. There you see the legs in contact right there with Brian Carpenter, both to the ground, but they're both running openly for the ball. The official did not pull the flag. A good no call. Camarillo, the punter. Carter on the near side. Kenny Gear on the far side. Very high. And Washington can down it. They had a chance. Now that's a ball they could have caught because there was no Wolverine near the ball. They elected to watch the ball drop and it goes in the end zone. The Wolverines will have the ball first down at the 20 when we return. 526 left. First quarter, no score. Happy New Year, everyone. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson uh, here at the Rose Bowl. Set the scene for you in case you join us late. Michigan, of course, the favorite, but Bo Schembechler, their head coach, has never won the last game of a Michigan season in 11 years, and five of those losses have been here in the Rose Bowl looking for that first win. Anthony Carter, a man who might help him get that first victory, but he's toppled at the 22 after a short game as he came in motion as he would normally run a pass pattern and looped into the backfield, Merlin Olson, and took a pitch on a sweep. I think one of the secrets for Michigan today is getting the ball into the hands of Anthony Carter, number one. They'll do it in many ways. This is a new wrinkle. Bringing him in motion, he slides into the position of a back. They flip the ball back to him, and you see he's, he's absolutely fearless carrying the ball. For a 155-pounder, he is amazing. Wangler at the 22, no score. Butch Wolfett to the 25, and it's a swarming Washington defense. Merlin, let's go back and review your comments in our pregame set as to what Washington has to do to beat Michigan today. The Washington Huskies almost a two-touchdown underdog. I really believe that they have to have a hot day from Tom Flick, their quarterback, and they have had that. He has been the outstanding player on the field so far, and their defense must play well, and their special teams must play well. The special teams have played well, and the defense has been the most surprising part of this game. Third and five, Michigan does not have a first down. Wangler, time to throw, and he's got it. First down to his tight end, Norman Betts. At the 32-yard line, Mark Stewart with a tackle. And that at the four-minute mark of this first quarter, 11 minutes played, is the first Michigan first down. Norm Betts made a couple of big catches in similar situation to that against Ohio State. They like to get him dragging across the field underneath when people have cleared out. Does a good job here of finding a little open room. Mark, Mark Stewart, number 38, the man that's covering him. That's a good pass and a good catch. Betts and Academic All Big Ten first team member the last two years. Wolf are gonna draw. Oh, he's at the 40, the 50, and all the way to the 43 of Washington. Butch Wolf.
talked about the huge offensive line, and they're taking advantage there. That's Mark Giroux diving to try and get a piece of Butch Popo, but he just runs away from everyone using his fine speed. He's a sprinter, and he sure showed it to you there. 24 yards to match the number on his back. First down at the 44 of the Huskies. Wolfuck again. And another big game to the Washington 33. And suddenly it appears, Merlin, they've gone to some traps. One of the things that will happen when a team is oversized, and certainly the offensive line, there's just a huge difference in their size and the defensive size of those Washington Huskies. That may not show in the early going because of the emotional pitch of the defense. But late in the game, it's going to come through, and that may be what we're seeing already. Drive started back at the 20-yard line. No score in the game. Three minutes left in the first quarter. First down after the 11-yard run by Wolfuck. This time it's Stan Edwards. And he's bounced down at the 30-yard line. An excellent hit by number 40, Ken Driscoll, a sophomore from Tacoma, Washington. If not for Driscoll's hard hit, Edwards had a lot of green grass to the outside. The thing that is disturbing, and I'm sure it's a little bit frightening to the defensive coordinator, Jim Lambright, is his defense is being blown off the ball. They're being blown back into their own secondary, giving those runners for the Wolverines lots of room to operate. The All-American Carter flanked right. Second and seven. Wangler is going to throw. In trouble and down he goes. Brett Gagliardi, a senior from Seattle, drops him for a loss at the 41. Interesting and uncharacteristic call from the Michigan bench. Of course, the plays are sent in from the sideline, and when the running game is going, you would expect a team that has made its name as a running team to continue to run. Instead, Wagler goes back to pass, pays the price to a fine defensive play by Gagliardi. We should point out that Wagler, recovering from very serious knee surgery, and you can see he's not very mobile. He's going long for Carter. And Carter well covered by Ken Gardner, number 29 at safeties. Thus far, they've blanketed number one. He's not been able to find daylight. I think, in, in fact, Merlin, I think on the play previous, Wangler was dropped for the loss looking for Carter, who was so well covered by Horton. They have put Horton man to man on Carter, and they're using some zones to try and cover the rest of the field. And it has been very effective. They know they have to keep the football away from number one. Anthony Carter, 46 catches, had 13 touchdown receptions this year. It's Bracken to kick. Ray Horton stands at the 10-yard line for Washington. He pooches it, and it's a good one. Michigan will down it at the three-yard. will start deep in their own end after a 37 yard punt by the freshman Bracken the first kicker ever recruited by Bo Schembechler they needed a good punter and they went all the way to Wyoming to find one now sailing high over this beautiful scene and Pasadena our Goodyear blimp Columbia back again this year bringing us the exciting aerial pictures of this 1981 Rose Bowl game. Well, after a bad first punt, the first one that Bracken kicked was off the side of his foot and set up that first drive for Washington. He has had two great kicks. Loading a Rose Bowl record 73-yard punt. Flick to Tyler. Running room. Tyler to the 15 and a first down. 12 yards before Brian Carpenter, number nine, could make the tackle. To side Tyler, an explosive runner. The importance again of getting into the line of scrimmage, getting into that secondary quickly. You see the acceleration, and that's a power hit on Tony Jackson right there. Tucson just unloaded on him. That gives Flick some room to operate. First down of the 15. Block running down to the one minute mark left, first quarter. Good play action fake, and good coverage as Kyle Stevens wrapped up by Paul Gergish and Robert Thompson. Gain of two. Robert Thompson has been all over the field today, the swiftest of those linebackers for this Michigan defense. He's one that we'll keep our eyes on because he certainly has the ability to make a big play defensively. 
passing situation. Michigan will loosen that defense. Scancy to the right. Anthony Allen left. And Flick will throw. Out of the backfield. Or actually the tight end, Bale, David Bale, to the 26-yard line. First down, Washington. Every defense has a weakness. And Michigan has been willing to give some room in the short outside areas against the pass. This is a delayed pattern to the tight end coming across. He's got a lot of room, and he takes advantage of it. Does a good job of running with the ball for the necessary yardage for that first down. David Bale grew up just a few miles from here in San Marino. Been a good homecoming from him. What a fine year he's had. Went to Pasadena City College, so he is back home. Played on the Junior Rose Bowl team. Flick on a roll, has a man. Allen down at the 37. That's near another first down. But Washington has had no trouble moving the ball, especially through the air. The problem is they have not been able to get any points on the board. And often, uh, if you are successful moving the football and cannot capitalize with points, that really takes a lot out of you in the first part of a game. They need to get something at the end of a drive. The they've been very good at that during this year, Dick. You're right, Merlin. An uh, opportunistic team they have been inside that 40-yard line. They have scored on almost every occasion. Tom Flick going to the sidelines as the first quarter comes to an end. We've played 15 minutes in Pasadena in this 67th Rose Bowl game. Michigan and Washington are scoreless. Second quarter, this 1981 Rose Bowl game. Happy New Year from all of us at NBC. And Michigan, very tough all season long, allowed only 10 points in the first quarter. And true to form, they shut out Washington in the first 15 minutes today. But the Huskies have returned the favor, and it's Washington's ball. First and 10 at its 37-yard line as we open the second quarter. Tom Flick to throw. Wide open is Bale, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a gain of eight more. And there was no one close to Bale in a white uniform. Let's take a look at Washington's scoring report card in the course of this 1980 season, and they got an A grade in the second period. Those numbers are quite unbelievable. 119 points. The second quarter has been their quarter throughout the season. They'd love to have it be their quarter here in the Rose Bowl. By the way, they were the top scoring team in the Pac-10 this year. Flick seven for 11 passing, but he stays in the ground to Tyler, and it was read well. Andy Canavino, 41, read the play well, forced Tyler wide, and Mel Owens, 53, finished him off for a loss. One of the things that I really like about this Michigan defense is their quickness and their ability to pursue. You know, one of the ways to test the defense in analyzing their, their seasonal record is to ask how many long runs have been uh, taken against them and how many long passes well we told you that three touchdown passes on the year only one long run of 30 yards and just a few between the 15 and 30s that's a very quick and a very active defense and a very big play Washington went from second and two to third and five flick over the middle complete to Allen great move Washington. Well, when we uh, talked about the importance of Tom Flick having a big day, even we could not anticipate the kind of early start he would have. He's zipping the ball, and he has receivers open in the Michigan secondary. Anthony Allen doing a fine job of getting away, stealing some extra yardage. I think the thing that's impressive to me is that Flick is reading the defense. He's finding the open man. First down play from the 29 to Son Tyler to the 25 yard line. A gain of four yards. In the first quarter, Merlin, Washington total yardage outgained Michigan 130 yards to 37. And there's the man who's done it. 114 now through the air for Tom Flick. But they were denied. They had that ball down on the goal line. Came oh so close to getting it into the end zone. They'd like to go back and have another shot at it, but they may get an opportunity here. Second and six. Possible audible by the quarterback Flick. Blindside blitz. He gets away, throwing to Scancy. Intercepted. So Michigan. Brian Carpenter stops the Huskies. Flick 
had not been pressured a great deal early but he gets the pressure here and he throws it up. He throws it to a man who was well covered. Brian Carpenter timed the ball perfectly. Just cut in on Scancy and took it away from him. Watch the timing here by Carpenter as he cuts across in front of the receiver. Good interception. But they're deep in their own territory. They've dodged another bullet down there, Dick. That's twice now. Well, Carpenter, who was an outstanding long jumper in high school, jumped 24 feet, 4 inches, used that leaping power to duck in front of the target. So, two long drives by Washington. Washington stopped once at the one-foot line, and now on the interception at the Michigan 8. Wangler hands it off. No gain. Butch Wolfock. Well, actually got out across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Call it a gain of three as he ducked in under that pile with a good second effort. In comes Alan Mitchell, number 30. There's a very important statistic, as we well know. If you can get the ball some extra time through interceptions or fumbles, and Washington's a plus 13, Michigan a plus 7 on the year. Washington has forced an incredible number of fumbles and averaged four takeaways a game during the course of the year, a key to their success. Almost a fumble, but Wolfe has a first down at the 21-yard line before Ken Gardner can make the tackle. Rather a strange play, a very late developing play. It looked like a late trap by number 82, Norm Betts. Now watch on the outside. That's 67 powers coming outside. 82 Betts scissoring to the inside with a late block, and Butch Wolfolk doing a little scissoring of his own as he goes over the top of a tackler. They've got their first down. They've got a little room to operate. I think we might see a more conservative offense here, though, from uh, Bo Schembechler. No score in the game. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Wolf a hit in the backfield. What a play by Mark Stewart. A sophomore from San Jose, California. He tied for the lead this year with 10 tackles for losses. And he in Seattle, University of Washington. Second and 12. Wolfen picked his hole and drives to the 27. That'll bring up third down and about four. McLean and Stewart, the tacklers for Washington. I mentioned that we might see a more conservative approach from the Wolverines. Certainly, Shem Beckler always at, the, at his own end of the field is going to be very careful about the way he handles that football. He's going to run only high percentage plays, and those basically will be running plays, unless he's down and with his back against the wall. He's also going to take advantage of his best tools, the running game and that big offensive line. That's exactly what he's doing right here. Michigan has won for four in third down conversions thus far. Wolfuck is close. But stop shy of that 30 yard line, and Washington will force Michigan to go to the punting game. Goliardi and Olson made the tackle. They spot the ball short of the 30. That brings up fourth and a long one, and Don Bracken, the punter, comes in. And on that play, you see one of the basic differences between these two teams. Washington would have thrown the football, and Michigan trusts the running game. Good point, Merlin Olson. Don Bracken, who's had an excellent day after Merlin pointed out it. He scuffed one on his first attempt, then had a record 73 yarder for the Rose Bowl, and then hit one inside the five. Ray Horton deep at the 30 for Washington. No pressure. Oh, he hits this one. Horton all the way back to the 16. Now it's Turn. Everyone got down there in time to be bunched up. Horton saw some room, popped out, and a very big play for, for Washington. Looked for a minute like they were going to be pinned back in their own end zone, but Horton got them out of trouble and gives the offense excellent field position. And Merlin to harken back on one of the points that we made prior to the game today. Now the University of Washington, to play well today, needed a hot hand from Tom Flick. Although they've not scored, he certainly has thrown the ball well. And the other was the great respect 
opposing coaches had and had this year for the Washington kick return game and they've shown it there with Horton 40 yards to set it up first down at the Michigan 35 Kyle Stevens and he's to the Michigan 27 a gain of eight on first down. Washington certainly in the spirit as they come to Pasadena with the roses on the shoulder pads. They enjoyed their first visit here. Some of these youngsters, a handful of them played briefly in the game three years ago when they upset Michigan 27 20. You'll recall that was a game where Warren Moon got them ahead 24 0, and then Washington just did hold off the comeback by Rick Leach and the Wolverines winning 27 20. Stevens, fumble, and it goes right to Washington. That's going to be a touchdown. No, they marked it dead. They marked it dead. Mike Riley caught the fumble, and there's one of the quickest whistles you'll ever see. The man was not down. The tackle forced the ball free. It went ahead to Riley, and for some reason, the whistle sounded. It almost looked like a planned play, but you wouldn't plan one like this. The ball stripped loose, bounces up into the hands of Riley. Riley thinks he's a halfback or a fullback, and a big one at that. What a moment it would have been for the senior from Auburn, Washington, who played behind Blair Bush and Tom Tamur, both now in the NFL. Watch that ball pop loose. It's hit right at the beginning here, stripped loose. 63, Cedric, Cole, uh, Cedric Winfred. Caraway, the man had knocked him loose. It's third and less than a yard, and Tyler has a first down for Washington at the 24 yard line. We'll see how important that call was. Whereas Bo Schembechler would say, I've got one of those coming anyway. Less than nine minutes left in a scoreless first half, and Don James Huskies continue to move well against this vaunted Michigan defense. Again, Michigan, best defense in almost 50 years. They went 18 quarters without allowing a touchdown to close out the season. Stevens to the 23 where he scissored down. Winfred Carraway, 63, sophomore from Detroit, a high school All American, along with Mike Turgovac, the senior from Austintown, Ohio. One of three starters on defense, along with Canavino and Owens for the Wolverines. I'm very impressed with the way Washington is mixing pass and run. And I think it's been tough on the Michigan defense. You've got to guess a little bit. You've got to guess in your in your calls defensively. And I think they've caught Michigan guessing pass a few times and hurt him with the run and vice versa. Second down, a long seven. Stevens again to the 18 yard line where the Huskies will be three yards short of a first down. Gergash and Canavino, the tacklers. Well, here's a chance to test our theory. We talked about Michigan trusting trusting the run in a third and and four yard or third and three yard situation. Quite the opposite for Washington. They seem more comfortable with the pass. Let's see what Dom James has planned on this particular play. Not trying to bail you out just in case that theory doesn't work, but the difference was that Michigan was in its own end of the field, third and four, and now the Huskies are in four down territory. I'm guessing he's going to run, Roland. I haven't been right yet this year. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Flick. Incomplete. Anthony Allen at the goal line. He was checked by Marion Body, and by the time he turned, the ball had already dropped incomplete. Anthony Allen, the intended receiver. Let's watch the contact here. There is some contact right there. Now, the defender is allowed to bump the receiver when he's in front of him, as long as the ball is not in the air or if the receiver initiates the contact. The official down in that corner reached briefly for his flag, thought better of it. We're going to have a field goal attempt from a very fine kicker, Chuck Nelson. It'll be a 35-yard attempt. It is good. Chuck Nelson, the top place kicker in the conference, nails one from 35 yards, and the Huskies are on the board first. Get a feeling for how exciting that play is to a kicker in the Rose Bowl. 
It's three-pointer through the upright. So the 40-yard punt return by Ray Horton sets up the 35-yard field goal. The Huskies three, the Wolverines nothing. Here's the field goal by Nelson. It appeared for a moment it might be blocked by Michigan, Merlin. They got an excellent penetration, and the Michigan special teams, the kicking units, have played very well in this game so far. They've done a fine job. I don't believe they got a hand on that one, but I, it did look like it from that camera angle. 3 nothing Huskies on the 35-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. Ray Horton's punt return of 40 yards set up the score. Anthony Carter, Stan Edwards, they stack up to try to deceive the kicker, but nothing that's deceptive wow. about that except long. It'll be a touchback. Total offense in the game. Washington three times the yardage over the favorite Michigan Wolverines, but only three points to show for it. They've dominated play in the first half. I think you hit the most important statistic right on the head, though. They only have three points. And, of course, that's the most important stat we have in this game. Don James knows that uh, Bo Schenbeckler's team is only a field goal away from a tie and a big play away from a touchdown, which would put them in the lead. Washington three times inside the Michigan 20, but have just a field goal to show for the effort. Stan Edwards, he's been quiet thus far and rips a eight yard game before Jerry McLean and Brett Gagliardi can make the tackle. They've been going to Wolfock and Edwards, who started due to an injury to Harlan Huckleby three years ago in the Rose Bowl, finally gets a chance to lug the ball himself. You see a number of three 100 yard games for Edwards. Wolfock also has three 100 yard games. And uh, they, they've actually had a total of eight 100-yard games if you count the other back, uh, Ricks, into that. Larry Ricks had two. Edwards again. Big hole. 40. And a first down at the 45. Washington defense gambling a little bit on the inside. And when you can make the big plays inside on a uh, running game very often by gambling you also are vulnerable and you see right here what happens when you leave a little too much room inside ran right past 64 Rusty Olson who was expecting a play outside six minutes 14 seconds left in the first half three nothing Huskies Edwards on a sweep good penetration boy that Mark Stewart he fought off the blocker got a piece of Edwards slowed him up and number 40 Ken Driscoll finished him off. Stewart, the man that made the play outside. Rusty Olson did a good job of getting penetration from the inside, forcing the man wide. And then Stewart, the cleanup man, gets to the outside, dives, gets a hold of Edwards by the ankle to strip him down for a short gain. But wanted to make sure we got Rusty in there cleared up. Didn't make the play the time before. Did make a very important play on that last one. Second and nine from just beyond the 45 of Michigan. Carter is out of your picture to the right. Wangler looking for him. Incomplete at the Washington 47. Carter slipped. Still got his hands on the ball. Mark Stewart was putting pressure on the quarterback. Want to watch a man draw a crowd? Watch number one, Anthony Carter. We talked about Horton. He's going to shadow him all day. Help is on the way. Kenny, Kenny Gardner will be arriving on the scene shortly, but that's a super one-on-one -on -one play on a very fine receiver. And a man who, who's not just a sprinter, he's a football player. He'll go up and he'll fight you for the football. He'll catch in traffic. And again, at 155 pounds, the lightest man, if not the smallest man on the field. Third down draw play, and it's going to work. Wolf, he's to the 40. He's all the way. On fourth and nine, Butch Wolfock runs 24 yards to the Washington 30-yard line. Wagler gets the ball back to 24. Wolfock in a draw situation. They just caught Washington, I think, gambling all out on the pass rush. Wolfock knows what to do with that football. As we said earlier, he was a sprinter. Took advantage of his speed to get into the secondary. Michigan trailing 3 0. First down at the Husky 30. And Edwards gets about three. Well, we have a moment, Merlin Olson. I'd like to send out a special Happy New Year to a man who has directed 
this NBC telecast of the Rose Bowl and our tremendous relationship with the Tournament of Roses Committee for 28 years. Harry Coyle calling the shots and what great pictures his cameramen bring us. And Jerry Ireland, Ireland, our technical supervisor. You go all the way back to radio days on NBC of the Rose Bowl before TV is 32nd year. Congratulations, gentlemen, and doing a better and better job every year for us. Wangler to throw. First and goal. Senior from Detroit has his first catch. Wrangler getting a little extra time because of the fake of the run and throws this right on target. Watch the feet, just barely inbounds. He's got to tap him in. He only needs one foot down in college football, and he got two down. That was even a good catch in professional ball. First and goal, Michigan at the Washington eight yard line. Wolfuck. McLean drops him at the six. They watched Washington make penetration into this same end of the field in the first quarter. They were turned away on the one foot line. Now they've got their defense on the field. Let's see if they can return the favor to the Michigan Wolverines. Ken Driscoll, linebacker, comes in. Derek Harvey, a safety man out for the Huskies. Wolfuck has 91 yards now in this first half. Wolfuck again. The leading rusher for the Maize and Blue is a sophomore, and again this year as a senior, has given Michigan the lead for its first time. Wilfolk cutting back against the grain. A play designed to come straight up the middle. He cuts it all the way to the backside, finds plenty of room, and runs over the last man. That's Bill Stapleton, number 11. Drops him into the end zone for the touchdown. Try for a point by Haji Sheik. It's there. So after the field goal by Washington, Michigan engineers an 80-yard drive. Wolfick from six yards for the touchdown and the score with 3.39 remaining in the first half. Michigan seven, Washington three. From Pasadena, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. On a beautiful football day, nearly 80 degrees in Southern California. This 1981 Rose Bowl finds Michigan ahead of Washington, 7-3. Anthony Allen at the five-yard line. Allen of the Huskies breaks a tackle and gets to the 21. Carlton Rose, a linebacker for the Wolverines, made the tackle, and we have a flag on the play at the sport at the spot where the tackle was made. There's the numbers on the drive, 80 yards and nine plays with Wolfuck, who was the star runner on that drive, getting the touchdown from six yards out. You saw the referee signal clipping against Washington. Half the distance to the goal to the 10. We talked about the importance of playing well on special teams. That's one thing you don't want to do. Washington on the run back, first down. Perhaps we'll have a chance to see it. Anthony Allen, number 15, the man who's returning that kick. The, the flag was thrown almost on the sideline. I believe that's it right there. That's 77, the man that's ticketed for that uh, penalty. First down, 10. Fumble! Tom Flick lost the ball. Who's got it? Apparently, it's Washington's ball, and that could have been a disastrous error. As you will reflect upon the day's play the Georgia Bulldogs fighting to be number one scored on a kickoff fumble by Notre Dame recovered a fumble of the Irish on the two yard line and that touchdown was the difference as Georgia beat the Irish 17 to 10. Thompson 99 
There to shut him off along with Keith Bostic, the safety. And we, suddenly the momentum seems to have swung. It seems to have swung a bit. And we mentioned how important those bottom line numbers are, those scores on the board. And even though Washington has gained a lot of yardage, moved the ball up and down the field, they've only got three points to show for it. Michigan has allowed some people to move the ball this year. Rich Campbell threw for 249 yards at the University of California. They still beat them in that game easily. On third down, nine. Complete to Tyler. But he, well, he's going to be very close to the first down at the 20 yard line. Bostic wrestled him down. He's playing in his own backyard, Keith Bostic. High school star in Ann Arbor, Michigan, stayed and attended the University of Michigan. And it won't be tough for them to measure this one. And it's a first down. Boy, Tyler's second effort. And how important it is deep in your own territory. But again, you get a feeling for the courage of this Washington team. They, uh, they were really blown out of this thing by a lot of people early. They said Washington doesn't have a chance. But Washington has dominated play early. And even though they are behind on the scoreboard seven to three, they certainly haven't given up anything. That was a key first down. They would have had to punt, and Michigan would have had probably good field advantage with two minutes left in this half. Whoops, early movement, it appeared, against Washington. I believe that was Vandeveer 79 off a little early on the right hand side. It's got to be a little nervous. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't had more mistakes in this game than we have had. It is a legal procedure against the Huskies. First down statistic, probably. Get to hunt to find that meaningful often. Good ball foul, illegal procedure, offense. Gives us a moment to talk about Tom Flick, the key to the Washington offense. He's thrown the ball 15 times in this first half, completed nine. Interestingly, that's 60% exactly his percentage for the entire season. Has 123 yards through the air. His dad watching from a Seattle hospital. I know this young man's heart and mind are separated by that distance concerned about his father that gets the five yards back on the short pop to Kyle Stevens that'll bring up second down and ten Mel Owens made the hit mentioning hospitals I'd like to send out a special New Year's hello to a little Heather a little friend of mine is spending the holidays in the hospital I guess we'd like to say hi and uh, a happy new year to everybody who's uh, having to spend a day in a hospital or a week or a month or whatever it happens to be. I hope this will be a better year for you. And we extend that with our very best wishes for 81 to all of you around the United States and those watching this telecast around the world on NBC. Stevens. Almost got to some daylight. He's to the 28 yard line, two yards shy of a Washington first down. The clock is now running at 115, 114. I'm really impressed with the quality of football we've seen so far in this game. Good offensive performance by both teams, some outstanding defensive plays. This is a tightly fought football game. I, I like the way they're playing this game. Washington now with 59 seconds, taking its time. They don't make the first down. They don't want Michigan to have a lot of time to work with at the end of this half. We'll see some timeouts if Washington picks up the first down. And they will. David Vail, first down at the 45. Out of bounds to stop the clock. 43 seconds left in the half. 17 yard play. David Bale, a favorite receiver for Tom Fleck during the season. We talked about the weakness of the Michigan defense in the flat areas. Keith Bostic, number 13, coming out late. But Bale finds room to amble down that sideline, gets it all the way out just shy of the 45-yard line. They've got time to do something here if they'll get moving. A lot of young high school players watching, hoping they'll be recruited. If you're not recruited by a major school, doesn't mean you can make it. Bale, no one wanted him out of high school. He went to Pasadena City College and now a collegiate star. Down the middle. Incomplete. What a hit on Aaron Williams, and he made a marvelous effort to try to hang on to the ball. Evan Cooper, 21, broke up the play. He's a fifth back end as Michigan's going to an extra defender. 37 seconds left. Watch the concentration of this receiver at the end of this play. Flick gets it a little bit behind him, and he does everything but stand on his head. Look at him reaching back, 
hangs on to that football as long as possible but the hit just stripped him of that ball that's again good football on both sides of the line second and ten from the forty five of Washington they trail Michigan seven to three time running out of the half open is Kansi complete at the Michigan thirty eight let's see if Washington calls time they do well at least there'll be a time call to get the chains in place or has Washington elected to use a timeout. That timeout that they had to take early in the game when they lost it down on a penalty is very costly to them right now. 29 seconds left. Washington driving close to least field goal range, trailing the Wolverines by four. Seven to three, Michigan leading Washington. Later in today's game, Merlin and I, along with Jack O'Rourke and Rick Forzano for NBC Radio, will be selecting the Toyota outstanding players from each team, and we'll make the announcement at the end of the game. Each school will receive a $1,000 scholarship to their respective general scholarship funds. Don James, Huskies, with 29 seconds left in this first half, have a first down at the Michigan 38. I think we got an audible. Flick to throw over the middle Anthony Allen 24 yard line and a first down Washington has only one timeout left this time out an official timeout to move the chains that was a 14 yard play we won't see a huddle here they're already lined up and ready to go they've called two plays in the huddle Dick you'll watch the referee mark the ball and the clock will begin there it is seven to three Michigan it's lead in jeopardy Quick out complete to Anthony Allen. They picked up a few yards and stopped the clock with 17 seconds left. And Flick is throwing the ball very effectively. Interestingly enough, after watching him at practice, I think he's throwing it better in the game than he did in practice. He is really a gamer. He's had some great games, Merlin. Arizona will attest to that. He was 16 for 17 against the Wildcats and three touchdowns. Seven to three. Michigan in the lead the last three possessions or the last two have led to scores and Washington trying to get something themselves before the intermission from the Michigan 19 in the flat to Stevens is he out of bounds yes with a first down at the Michigan 10 stopping the clock with 11 seconds left what a drive by Washington flick again Reading the defense and taking advantage of that open area in the flat. Getting the ball to a running back who knows what to do it. Just barely did get out of bounds. There. In fact, it looked from that angle that he didn't get out of bounds. The clock is running. Five. I don't think Washington realizes it. Going for the touchdown. Incomplete and one second left. With one second left, Washington will have a final chance, and they're not going to gamble. They're bringing in the field goal unit. A shot and a touchdown. The ball thrown over the top of Carpenter, Brian Carpenter, number nine. And Anthony Allen gets up, gets one hand on the football, but simply could not hang on. But that's the kind of pass you're not going to throw in an area where it can be intercepted. An apparent field goal attempt from 20, make that 27 yards. And it is good. So on the final play of the first half, the Huskies get their second field goal. And at the intermission, well, just the way it ended last year, we had a one-point game. After 30 minutes, it's one point today. The Maze and Blue, seven. And the purple and gold of Washington six. We'll be back with an excellent halftime show for you right after we pause for these words. At halftime, Pasadena, California, the 67th Rose Bowl finds Michigan leading Washington seven to six. Dick Anberg with Merlin Olson. You can start an argument in a hurry when you say best band in the country. Well, many would argue that you're going to see it right now. The Maze and Blue, the University of Michigan Wolverines marching band. Let's enjoy.
Michigan band directed by Eric Becker. And while the Wolverine band entertains us at this 1981 Rose Bowl halftime show, let's take a brief look at the campus of the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. The preceding message was furnished by the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association on behalf of the University of Michigan. And while we watch the University of Michigan band, the other bowl game scores today. Georgia defeated Notre Dame 17 to 10 in the Sugar. And in the Cotton Bowl, it was Alabama 30, Baylor 2. Here at halftime, Michigan 7, Washington 6. the big band sound of the team from NBC's Monitor.
Halftime, the granddaddy. And it's come up another beauty, not only in terms of the weather, but in the football activity. Michigan leading 7 to 6 over Washington. This is the University of Washington marching band, directed by Bill Bissell. As we look down from high above on this marvelous scene, it reminds us of what a tremendous day this is. The Tournament of Roses is more than a great football game. Merlin and I were up early with our families to come out to the parade route and watch that sensational parade. You have to see it in person to believe that all of those colors are really flowers and vegetation. And then the colors of the crowd and the pageantry it's a tremendous event, and if ever you're in the West Coast around the holidays, make sure that you spend the entire day from parade to final gun here at the Tournament of Roses Festival. As the University of Washington plays on during the 67th Annual Rose Bowl Halftime Show, let's travel to Seattle, Washington, take a look at the research taking place at the University of Washington. The preceding message was furnished by the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association on behalf of the University of Washington. look from above, you're reminded that the crowd itself here at the Tournament of Roses is a microcosm of this country. You can see everything here from a 19-year-old sophomore with his shirt off, getting some sun. He's down here from Seattle and rooting for his Huskies to an 85-year-old gentleman with his lovely wife. And they've been supporting the Tournament of Roses Festival here as a member of the Pasadena Society for some 50 and 60 years. They're all here. And obviously, they are all enjoying this 1981 Rose Bowl game is being brought to you by Toyota. Make a quality built Toyota part of your game plan. See them all at your Toyota dealer. Oh, what a feeling to drive a Toyota. By Goodyear, makers of Arriva, even its footprint tells you it's different. By Lohenbrau, when you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lohenbrau. And by General Electric Television, GE, we bring good things to life. 
as this halftime winds down, our congratulations to the bands from Michigan and Washington. An excellent show. The score at the intermission, 7-6 Michigan. At the intermission at the Rose Bowl at 7-6 Michigan over Washington. And some exciting plays in the first half, although the score seems to indicate a defensive struggle. It was hardly that, Merlin Olson. It really was. Uh, Washington came right out firing the football. And, of course, uh, the hero there, Tom Fleck, the guy who really got things rolling for Washington in a hurry. In fact, Washington now gaining when we look at the official statistics in the first half. We'll see the Huskies certainly move the ball more effectively than the Wolverines. And reminder, Michigan did not allow and has not allowed a touchdown to be scored against its defense now in the equivalent of five complete games, four and a half games going into this one and two quarters today. And so the highlights of the first half, we talked about Tom Flick and going to the air and being the key to the Washington offense. And he certainly threw it well. This one to Anthony Allen to set up the first drive by the Huskies. Flick waiting as long as possible. Flipped that one right over the head of Brian Carpenter, number nine. Got them in good position. Here's the play at the goal line. Fourth and one. Was he in or was he not? One official signal. Touchdown. He said it was premature. Stopped at the one-foot line. Now the punt returned by Ray Horton. This will set up the first field goal by the Huskies. Horton fumbled the ball. Everybody kind of got on top of him, and he found some open territory. Excellent punt return by Ray Horton. That led to a 35-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. 3-0. Now Kyle Stevens for the Huskies, and he coughs it up, but it goes right to Riley, his center, and Riley runs in for what he thought was a touchdown. The play was ruled dead, a quick whistle, and the Huskies had to settle for the field goal by Nelson. This was uh, also a part of this whole sequence started by the Horton punt return. Now it's Michigan's turn, and they went to number 24, Butch Wolfuck with a run, and Wangler went to his outside man, Alan Mitchell, number 30, but it was Wolfuck who scored the touchdown. What's the cutback here? All the way back against the grain, fine run, excellent read. And the extra point hammered through. Makes uh, Michigan the 7-3 lead. But with three minutes left in the first half, Washington engineered an 80-yard drive from its own 10-yard line all the way to the Michigan 10. Nelson kicked the field goal at the gun, and that's where he stands 7-6. Wolverines leading the Huskies. Both teams are back in the field. We'll have the kickoff in the second half right after we pause for this. We start the second half. And Michigan, of course, will receive. They kicked off to start the game and will defend the goal to our left. Although the breeze, a uh, slight breeze from right to left start of the game, the flags are hanging limp at the moment. The official statistics of the first half, Merlin Olson, indicate Washington outgained the Wolverines 2-1. to one. Actually had 14 first downs to just seven from Michigan. And interesting how they gained those. 11 by pass, three by run. Michigan had five by run and two by pass. Time of possession not quite as unbalanced as you would expect with that uh, imbalance in first downs. Total yardage very heavily on the part of, of very heavily in favor of Washington. But as we said, the most important stat, the score on the board. And in that statistic, Washington is one point behind the Wolverines of Michigan. Leading individual players, Marlon, Butch Wolfuck, the leading rusher, 97 yards for Michigan. Kyle Stevens, 51 for Washington. Passing, Wangler was only two of six for 26 yards. Flick for Don James Huskies. There he is, 15 for 23, 189 yards, had one intercepted. One of the things you really have to be concerned about is not losing your emotional edge. And it's been a very emotional first half, especially for these Washington Huskies. They'll be kicking the ball off from the hash mark. Important that they get things started right in this second half. Washington's defense successfully kept the ball away from Anthony Carter. He ran the ball once for just a couple of yards. He, in the first half, did not catch a pass. And now he lines up in that stack with Stan Edwards. They try to disguise where Carter will be, hoping he will move to the side that the ball is being kicked. But Nelson's kicks were so long, it didn't matter much anyway in the first half. Carter at the one. Anthony Carter in the open field. Bounces to his feet as he almost always does. He's amazing, 155 pounds. Led the nation in kickoff returns with that 29.4 average. Carter drives himself right into the corner of the end zone. That's a superb kick by Nelson. Watch Newsom, number 23. He hits him right in the air, puts that, puts that headgear on the football. That's one of the toughest 155 pounders you'll find anywhere. 
Number 30, Chris O'Connor finished the tackle first play. It's Stan Edwards. No gain. The fullback for the Wolverines ran right into Mark Giroux, number 67, the nose guard for the Huskies. Dick, I think the biggest surprise to me in this game was the way the Washington defense has played. And they have started the second half the way they played the first half. Check that offense. Reset it for you for Michigan. John Wangler is the quarterback. He has Butch Wolfolk and Stan Edwards behind him. Alan Mitchell and the All-American Anthony Carter, number one of the wide receivers. Tied in is Norm Betts. The line of Lilja, Powers and Becker at guard, Paris and Moransky at tackle. All Big Ten performers. Flags are down. Carter with the ball. And Bill Stapleton wraps him up at the 19-yard line. Stapleton, hiding behind all of those white jersey blockers, just kind of slipped through and made the tackle after a short gain. That was Carter's first reception. And the flag is down. Offside, Michigan. I don't think they'll take it. I think they'll take the down away from him. Not much made in the way of yardage. Offside, offense. By the way, Bill Love's microphone is a first in Rose Bowl history, as so many firsts have been established between the Rose Bowl and NBC. First time that an official has used a microphone during the course of play. Defensively for the Washington Huskies, Jenkins, Giroux, and Olsen up front, the linebackers, Galliardi, Driscoll, McLean, and Stewart, with Horton and Stapleton at the corners, Gardner and Harvey at safety. Third down, seven, Wangler. Dumps it out to Wolfock, and he has a first down at the Michigan 30. Driscoll and Harvey made the tackle. First down, Mesa Blue. You have to set your priorities defensively, and they've obviously, on the Washington side of the line of scrimmage, decided to stop Carter. They were covering him very carefully, and they made room for Wolfock. He took advantage of that, has the first down on the 30. And good blocking for Wangler. He had plenty of time to find Wolfer. A toss to Wolfer. And a vicious tackle at the 32-yard line. And Giroux with another crisp hit for Washington. Kenny, Kurt Becker had Kenny Driscoll about 10 yards down the field, still blocking him as the whistle was blown. And Driscoll turned around and popped him one. The official said, hey, none of that. Butch Wolfolk now with 100 yards for the Wolverines. Second down, eight. And Wolfolk has a first down at the 41-yard line before Ken Gardner, number 29, can make the tackle. Excellent faking on that play by Wangler. In fact, he had the secondary still convinced it was a pass, even though the, the play was well underway. Watch him as he hands the ball off and then goes back to fake the pass. Wolfolk just exploding through the line of scrimmage. We talked about the size advantage that Michigan has offensively. They may begin to capitalize on it more and more in the second half. This is Stan Edwards. He bowls his way to the 44, second and seven. Butch Wolfolk. From Westfield, New Jersey, want to go back to him. He's just a junior. He'll be back at 207 pounds. He qualified for the Olympic trials in the 100 meters. He has run a 10-1 win-aided 100 meters. That's world class. And he carries 207 pounds, which we told you is the leading rusher as a sophomore and again the leading rusher this year. And Don James trying to figure out a way to stop him. Carter is not in the game. They're using two tight ends, Christian and Betts. Jenkins did not get back onside. That's Wolfick. And he's all the way to the Washington 42 before Driscoll can trip him up. It's a Michigan first down. A good lesson in that play, Dick. I think the whole defensive team saw the flags in the air. They kind of stopped. But the penalty will go against the A lot of the defensive players just kind of stopping here. Not much Wolfolk. He's going full speed. Kenny Driscoll finally over there, number 40, to stop him. But it's a big gainer. He was the Big Ten outdoor 200-meter champion and second in the 100 meters. 
Michigan on the march, leading seven to six early in the third quarter. Don't forget the Orange Bowl to follow. Florida State at Oklahoma. Wangler almost intercepted as Ken Driscoll, number 40, shot in front of the intended receiver, Stan Edwards. And good pressure from Rusty Olson from that defensive right side. I think that Wangler felt the pressure, had to get rid of that ball a little sooner than he wanted to. Both quarterbacks have had relatively good, in fact, excellent protection on this day. But I think Flick has certainly been the more capable passer, although Michigan, by nature and by offensive choice, has gone to the running game much more often than they have to the pass. Anthony Carter, number one, is flanked right. And Alan Mitchell back into the game is split left. Wangler to throw. Complete to Betts at the 37. That won't be good enough for a first down. Ken Gardner, the weak safety with a quick reaction, made the tackle and will bring up third and about five. We talked about some of the differences between these teams offensively. One of the differences defensively is that Washington will jump its defensive linemen half a gap one way or the other to put them in a different position after the audible has been called. The other team, Michigan, will slant their linemen one way or the other. Just a difference in the way the game is being played on the line of scrimmage. Complete to Carter! And he's to the 11-yard line, Anthony Carter! players in every game that when they get the football they make your stomach not up. Anthony Carter is one of those and he just about waltzed it into the end zone. Look at the legs. His thighs are about the same size as his calves. What a beautiful move he put on Horton. He put Horton on the ground. Although Horton coming back in time to put a necktie on him. Michigan leading 7 to 6. First down at the 11. Wolfick in trouble. And he can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Brett Gagliardi led the defensive charge for Washington at the 12. It'll be second and 11. And Wolfuck upset with himself for at least the development or the lack thereof of that last play. He's had a big day. Look at those numbers, 120 yards. His best day all season involved the game at Indiana when he ran 64 yards, the longest scrimmage play of the season. <laughs> Look. He's got legs like Enberg. Only I can't move. 155 pounds, but how tough he is. This is the 12th play in this drive. Wangler to the nine, maybe the eight yard line. Driscoll made the tackle of Wolfen. And it's third and eight. Washington's defense doing a good job on that play, getting outside. They don't have quite the team speed defensively that a lot of teams have, but they have played highly emotional football here today. They'd like to keep Michigan out of the end zone, hold them to three points, or preferably take it away from them and give them nothing here. Carter to the top of your screen, two tight ends. Wangler looking for Carter. Wide open. to a touchdown Wangler dropping it into Dunaway and he couldn't wrestle it away. One of the Michigan coaches indicated that their tight ends are primarily blockers and not pass receivers although we have seen Betts catch a couple of passes today. That's one that could have been caught. I'm sure Dunaway will dream about that for many weeks and months to come. Haji Sheik Ali Haji Sheik from 5th 25 yards away. It's good. And the sophomore, his father, attended the University of Michigan and is now an instructor in mechanical engineering down at the University of Texas at Arlington. And I'm sure he's watching, sharing his sign was given Michigan a four point lead. 848 left in the third quarter. Michigan by four. The value of a backup quarterback, Rich Hewlett, here. Watch him take a bad snap and get it down in time. 
Kicker gets it up through. Good timing, good coordination. Well, you don't want to blow one of those. And the pace of scoring picking up. The last four possessions all have resulted in scores, Dick. And that Merlin was a, a long drive with the opening kickoff of the second half from the Michigan 15 all the way to the Washington 8 before the field goal. That's Allen at the 10. And into traffic. Can't make it to the 20 yard line. He stopped at about the 18. Nice coverage for Michigan 93. Mike Lemoran from Grafton, Wisconsin, down in a hurry to be a part of that tackle. Love those linebackers on your kicking teams. They're ideally equipped for that kind of play. 10 to 6, Michigan leads it with 8.43 remaining in this third quarter. Tom Flick, the quarterback, Toussaint Tyler, and Kyle Stevens behind him. Scancy to the left. Aaron Williams to the right. Flick complete to Tyler. And the big fullback has run out of bounds at the 27, close to a first down. Ryan Carpenter, the tackler. Some good, smart play calling on the part of the Washington Huskies. Bob Stoll, their offensive coordinator. They've repeatedly taken advantage of the outside areas of Michigan's defense. You see one of the Michigan coaches exhorting his troops. They want a few more points on that board. Certainly nothing safe in the way of a lead. One touchdown would put Washington back on top. Second and one. And flick to Stevens. And a good solid hit. Stevens was able to fall forward and close to a first down. They may require a measurement. But the defense of the Wolverines helped by Tony Jackson who came up from the secondary. I'm a little surprised by that call an ideal opportunity I would think maybe to go for a bomb or a big play with second and very short yardage. Uh, Washington uncharacteristically being conservative. Leroy Lutu number 81 has come in for Washington a second tight end as you see the measurement. Just enough. We actually had three tight ends in there, Dick. Ron Wheeler, number 85. I guess they were going to go with all three of them if it were not, in fact, the first down. So they leave the game, and the three outside men come in Scancy and Williams, along with Kyle Stevens. Back into the backfield. Don James looking through the setting sun for another victory in the Rose Bowl and Bo Schambeckler it's incredible the great coach of the Wolverines has never finished a year at Michigan with a victory a tie with Ohio State the best ending for him Stevens acrobatically to the 31 a gain of three good year blimp what a picture that is it was uh, so delightful to watch it during the halftime show of the marching bands to see those formations at the controls of that 192 foot blimp Joel Chamberlain veteran Goodyear pilot from Norwood Massachusetts Happy New Year Joel NBC's own George Simpson is on camera Bill Betzner video controls great job what a picture On second and seven, it's Flick over the middle, complete to Scancy. First down at the 50-yard line, 19 yards to Scancy. Scancy starting in motion and then darting quickly into the secondary, getting a running start on the defender that was trying to come with him. And Flick, as he has been all day, right on target. And his backs really picking up the Michigan blitzes, aren't they? They're consistently picking off the linebackers. Scancy was the most valuable player in the Sun Bowl last year when Washington beat Texas. Down the middle to Williams. Williams should have caught the ball, and then it was almost deflected to Tony Jackson. Williams had caught a couple of passes earlier in the game. As we said, he's the favorite deep receiver of Tom Flick. Flick flicked that one right into his fingers. The ball bounced loose. That's certainly one of the easier balls to catch that we have seen all day. I'm sure Williams uh, will dream about that one. Flick, there are his statistics today. He's had a good day, one interception. His team trails Michigan 10 to 6. Stevens just no room to run gets to the Michigan 49 Paul Gergash along with number 53 Mel Owens on the tackle 
It'll be third down and eight for the Huskies of Washington. Bo Schembechler. Boy, it's been rough for him in Pasadena. You recall his first trip here 11 years ago, the 1970 game. Suffered the heart attack two years ago. He lost a game on the Phantom touchdown by Charles White of USC. He's come up empty. 0 for 5. Again, they picked up the blitz. Scancy. And it's broken up by Brian Carpenter. Number 9, Carpenter denied. The same action that Scancy had started before. Started in toward the quarterback, cut into the secondary, but instead of continuing on across, you'll see him yourself. Now he darts into the secondary. Instead of coming to his left, cuts to his right. Good adjustment by Carpenter, who cuts him in half there, although the ball had already bounced clean. Rich Camarillo will punt it for Washington. Evan Cooper and Anthony Carter deep for Michigan. Carter just outside the 10. High kick, fairly short, but good coverage, and Cooper on the fair catch at the 16-yard line. Now Michigan, with the lead, will begin deep in its own end after a 33-yard punt. Six minutes, 23 seconds left in the third quarter. It's Michigan 10, Washington 6. From Pasadena, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Today's refugees surviving the promised land, Saturday at 7. Michigan operating in front of its own fans, and they've set up a roar to try to encourage the Wolverines from their 16. Wolfock dives to the 22. We have some 75 million around the nation watching this and also around the world. Some of the countries that are watching the live telecast of this 67th Rose Bowl game. South America, Japan, people in London, Saudi Arabia tuned in live today. Happy New Year to you all. Let's hope it's a happy, healthy and a peaceful one for all of us. Edwards dumped at the 24. Mark Giroux and Ken Driscoll are the tacklers. It's third and two. Nick, in keeping with that long list of countries who have joined us for this telecast, interesting, I think, to observe that this is more than a football game. This is really an event, a spectacle. It uh, transcends the interest even of football with the beautiful parade this morning and all of the excitement, the color, the pageantry. A very special opportunity for all of us here to, to be a part of a great occasion. Amen. Third and two. Play action. Wide open is Christian. And he has a first down. An uncharacteristic Michigan call. Well, they're gambling, and the gamble pays off. Wagler is on the throw. Not beautiful, not artistic at either end, but certainly effective. Chuck Christian was not listed on the season statistics of having caught a pass all year for the University of Michigan. First down at the 34. Edwards. Mark Giroux's play in the middle of that Washington defense has really been evident on anything involving Edwards up the middle. He's just been there to smother it. Giroux, the leading tackler on that defense for Washington. Unusual for a nose man to have that distinction. Michigan has beaten Washington five times to one loss, but that loss, of course, was three years ago here in the Rose Bowl. Good protection. Is it good? Alan Mitchell. Yes, at the Washington 46. 16 yards. We have dropped our hats to Tom Flick early in this game. Let's do the same to John Wangler. He zips this ball right on target, a little bit low, but his receiver 
digs it out for the catch. Like a right fielder diving, make that shoestring job. Alan Mitchell, first down. Wolfuck on the draw. And he's all the way to the 36 yard line. And another first down, and he may be hurt as Jerry McLean, the senior linebacker for Washington, with a solid hit. And Wolfuck looked as if he was grabbing at his leg. Chance to see it for yourself here. Wolfuck doing a good job of popping it to the outside, reading the defense so well as a runner, and getting down. He may have a cramp. We'd certainly hope it's nothing serious. Michigan has an out, another outstanding running back, Larry Ricks, who could replace him. You're we'll watching it all on KNBC Los Angeles. 340 remaining, third quarter. Michigan 10, Husky 6. 340 left in the third quarter. Let's check how Butch Wolfick was injured on that last carry. Watch his knee at the end of this run as he is bent over and tackled. Would appear that he is, in fact, injured, that it was not a cramp. Watch the knee bent right back just at the point of impact there. He's been helped off the field. He's been replaced by number 46, Larry Ricks, and Ricks gets the call immediately, and he is drawn a crowd of purple. Rusty Olson and Fletcher Jenkins made the tackle. Larry Ricks is from Barberton, Ohio. That's the same hometown as his coach, Bo Schembechler, and the same high school that produced the All-American Billy Taylor from Michigan. He played in the 70 and 72 Rose Bowls. Ricks has had an outstanding year. 829 yards rushing, a 5.1 yard average, 5'10", 200 pounds. So not much difference statistically between Wolfuck and Ricks. To Carter, first down at the 24. Steve Polk, number 49, and Anthony Carter exchanging pleasantries after the play. Beautiful slant pass, good route, and a little zip on that ball. I didn't know that uh, Wangler had that kind of rifle in his arm. 14 yards to Carter, who has three catches all in this second half. Well, he's fearless. He runs that pattern inside right into the teeth of those defensive backs and linebackers. Ball at the 23. Carter acting like he wants to throw the ball. Out of bounds at the 14. Close to another first down. When you come around the outside, there's no substitute for speed. This man has it. Watch him dipping back, taking the little toss. They get an extra blocker on the play that way. Number 46, Ricks out in front, but most of it is just made on the pure speed of number one, Anthony Carter. Butch Wolfuck as they work on that right knee. This. In 40 yards. The mascot of the University of Washington, and he's hoping in that spirit that he can get those defensive players to stop Michigan. It's 10 to 6 Wolverines and they're on the march again. Wangler wants to throw. Going to run. Out of bounds at the nine yard line. Mark Giroux, Ken Gardner, Jerry McLean all in on the tackle. We talked about a knee operation that took some of the speed from this fine young quarterback but you didn't remove any of the heart. Watch him go for the extra yardage here. He'll pay a price for it, but he'll pay it gladly. Second team academic All-American Wangler worked out four to five hours every day after the surgery last year. The doctor said, frankly, son, you won't play football again. He would not believe him. He got himself ready, and here he is, the quarterback in the Rose Bowl. Ricks feeling his way to the seven-yard line where it'll be second and goal. Galliardi with a tackle for Washington. Physical superiority, the size and strength of that Michigan offensive line beginning to assert itself as we thought it might in the late going here. Here one comes the, Carter. One of the things that happens, Dick, when you start to get tired, you lose some of that enthusiasm and some of that strength that keeps pumping from the adrenaline, and pure strength and size begin to take their toll. This is the second long march by Michigan in the third quarter. The other to a field goal. This one, touchdown!
passes in two years than anyone in Michigan history. Anthony Carter and now the Wolverines have opened a 16 to 6 lead and the driver point by Haji Sheik. It's good. Hail to the victors. John Philip Sousa called that fight song one of the three best marches ever written. 11 left, third quarter, Michigan 17, Washington 6. It's a distinct honor when a sophomore is voted the most valuable player by his teammates. Usually that goes to an offensive senior lineman, a co-captain, but the Michigan team acknowledged Carter, a quiet sophomore, off the field as their top performer this year. And now Carter's touchdown from Wangler makes it 17 to 6, a kickoff by Haji Sheik. Directed at Anthony Allen. And he runs rather gingerly out to the 22-yard line. We talked about Schembechler and the plays being called. You see a huddle there between several of them. Schembechler finally said, hey, I'm going to call this play myself. Looked like he just made the call. <laughs> he said, throw the ball to number one. Now watch, let's watch the play. We talked about Carter as being the most exciting player on the field. That's the reason why. No move really here, just speed and driving to the open area and a perfect toss by Wangler. Dick, the last three possessions by Michigan, drives of 80 yards for a touchdown, 83 for a field goal, and 83 for a touchdown. Now they're starting to dominate the play. David Bale, the tight end, hit hard at the 26-yard line by Brian Carpenter, the junior from Flint, doing a solid job all day. They're a four-minute drive, and in this third quarter especially, Michigan, 10 and a half minutes with the ball, Washington, two and a half minutes. 25 plays to seven. The big difference in this game, the second half, Michigan taking advantage of that domination. In the first half, when Washington was dominated, they weren't getting the points. Or when Washington was dominating, they were not getting the points on the board. Kyle Stevens into a Michigan stone wall, and the biggest brick was Mike Turgovac, number 77. He was all Big Ten as a junior, and again, all Big Ten this year. Bo Schembechler. What would it mean? Did it to win that last game. Merlin, can you help us to identify with his feelings? Well, I know this, that when you lose that last game, especially a big game, a bowl game, one that you aimed at, pointed for, that stays in your throat, and everybody reminds you of that. Oh, what a catch. And Marion Body, what a play, short of the first down. David Bale is stopped. But as I was saying, that Coach Schembechler will remember the game in the last series, the last of this game, I'm sure, will stick with him no matter what the outcome. He'd like it to be pleasant. We're in the final minute of the third quarter. Michigan fans cheering their defense. Rich Camarillo, the putter for Washington. And back is Anthony Carter at the Michigan 30. With him is Evan Cooper. Good kick by Camarillo, but there's the man, Carter, at the 25. And he slips at the 30. Oh, he's a cat right back on his feet. A 49-yard kick by Camarillo. Clock stop. Five seconds left in this the third quarter. A quarter that has been all Michigan. They've outscored the Huskies 10 to nothing. A hang glider who came flying right through the center of the stadium, fortunately a couple of hundred feet over the playing surface, and now out over the parking lot here in the Arroyo Seco. Actually landing on the Brookside golf course here, Dick. Final play of the third quarter, and Washington almost offside. Edwards, sure-handed ball carrier to the 34, Mark Stewart with a tackle, and that's the end of the third quarter. The 67th Rose Bowl game has one quarter to go. The score, Michigan 17, Washington 6. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. A large gem, Pasadena, California, the Rose Bowl. Another spectacular picture postcard scene from the Columbia 
as she circles the 1981 Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, California. 104,863 fans, another big sellout crowd at the Granddaddy. Michigan's ball. And it is Edwards again to the 38-yard line. Rusty Olsen with a tackle. It'll be third and a short three. Well, I imagine right about now, Merlin, Don Cricky, John Brody, Bob Trumpy are watching the players on the field down at the Orange Bowl in Miami where second-ranked Seminoles meet the fourth-rated Oklahoma Sooners. There's another game with more than uh, just football, the pageantry of that event. Having had a chance to do that game a few times, I certainly would agree with you there. Stay tuned. The Orange Bowl to follow here on NBC. Wangler tipped and almost intercepted. McLean, 47, got his hand on the ball. And that'll force Michigan into a punting situation. Anthony Carter was the intended receiver. Bo Schembechler, his team leads 17 to 6. He's never been closer to a Rose Bowl win. He has lost 10 to 3 to Michigan in 1970, 13 to 12 to Stanford in 72. 14 to 6 to Michigan in 77, 27 20 to this Washington team in 78, and 17 to 10 to USC two years ago. They'll try and block it. Oh, very close. A line drive kick and a good bounce again for Bracken, although it hit the sidelines at the 16 yard line. Well, the hang glider did attract a crowd, a few policemen around uh, there was a rumor that that gentleman was going to try to fly right into the Rose Bowl and land on the field and uh, they were waiting for him. Now it's Washington's turn to try to spur the Huskies. They've got to wonder if Don James won't pull out all the stops here and go into his bag of tricks. He hasn't really done that too much here in the early part of this game even in the second in the third quarter here. We open the fourth quarter. He trails. Does Washington 17 to 6? Flick pumping and going long to Williams. That's going to be intercepted. Bostock. Keith Bostock all the way to the 14 yard line, but a flag is down. You saw the reaction of the Michigan coaches up in the box up here. <laughs> Coach Schembeck are not too excited about it himself. Bostic doing an excellent job of reading the receiver. They're not going to let him deep. The ball thrown over the head of the intended receiver, Williams, and Keith Bostock doing a good job. Penalty thrown. It's already been thrown. We did not get a chance to see it there. But it's going to be marked back. I'm sure it was a clipping call. All the way to the 28 yard line, the penalty. Clipping on the run back. First down. In fairness to Tom Flick, I thought Aaron Williams gave up on the pattern. He stopped running, and Flick was counting on him streaking. And that might have been uh, more Williams' fault. See, he slowed down. He's got to continue the pattern. The quarterback has to believe that his receivers are going to run the route out. And you're absolutely right, Dick. As much as anything, his stopping caused the interception. Keith Bostock, nevertheless, with the interception, Michigan with the ball. Walfuck, that's good news. He's back in the game. Mark Giroux, who has been outstanding for Washington defensively, the junior from Mercer Island, Washington, made another tackle. But Walfuck's okay. And that will gladden the hearts of the Michigan fans. Well, he may have indeed had a cramp. Uh, that was what I had felt early. You see, Bo Beckler, a very, a very emotional coach, a bulldog of a man, determined to win. He passes that feeling on to his team and on to his staff. Play action, Wangler in trouble. That should be grounding. It is. Washington fans here. Galliardi made the play intentionally grounding against Wangler. That will be marked off from the spot of the grounding, too. That's a costly penalty. So Michigan in a reverse action after the interception by Boston. 
Deliberately grounding the ball. Loss of down. Not only penalty from the spot of the foul, but loss of down. Wangler obviously given a chance again. Would not throw that late pass. Didn't have a chance. Now to the 10 yard line. Third down. And about 27 28. Up the middle. Waltek breaking tackle. Some of the bad breaks that have gone against Bo Schembechler have turned back in his favor. What appeared to be a, a play just to kind of grind up some clock here turns into a tremendous gainer. Big run by Butch Wolfuck. And he just breaks loose and accelerates into the secondary, picks up all that yardage and a little bit more. Fellow that left the field and some concern as to his injury. He's obviously okay and battling back in and making the longest run of the day. Mark Giroux, another tackle for the University of Washington on Stan Edwards. Oh, he's just worn Edwards' number all day. You look up at the clock ticking away at 12:41, 12:40. Our brother. Here's the family. The cheer. Michigan's number 57. Tim Anderson, a linebacker from Ann Arbor, freshman. Wangler open. Norm Betts and the tight end is to the Washington 46, and that's close to a first down. 12 minutes and 18 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Michigan leads Washington 17 to 6, and the Wolverine defense again has not allowed a touchdown. They were last scored upon a touchdown by Illinois in the second quarter. That was now more than five games ago. They shut out Illinois the second half. They went on to shut out in terms of touchdowns. Indiana, Wisconsin, Purdue, Ohio State got only a field goal, and they've allowed only two field goals today. And I don't believe he made the first down as Ray Cadditch, number 61, a sophomore who moves into the line in short yardage as a four man defensive front, and he stopped Ricks Cole. It's impressive to me that this Washington bunch has not quit at all yet. Rusty Olson, number 64, 67, Giroux, 61, Cadditch, all aggressively into the backfield, making that play. Michigan has to kick it away. Loss of a yard on fourth and two. Bracken to punt. Or is he? Well, they're trying to draw him off sides. Look at that. 68. They're going to draw the penalty for too much time, finally. Well, but with a lead of 17 to 6, they chewed up some extra time. And with Bracken's foot, he doesn't mind the five yards. What they've done, Dick. They normally go from a two point position on the punt and they drop down to a three point stance hoping to draw uh, the Washington Huskies offside. It did not work and I guess they just figured to take the time and take their penalty. A good kicker really can kick almost as effectively uh, five yards back from this position on the field. He can just kick it loose and kick it for the end zone. This is the 35th game, as we mentioned, between the Pac-10 and Big Ten. And after the Big Ten just ran off to a huge early lead in the series, the decade of the 70s belonged to the Pac-10. Only one Big Ten team won, Ohio State, in the 70s. So you can imagine that Midwest really rooting for Michigan today. The overall series, 18 and 16, and Bracken hits a beauty. Horton at the seventh. He's being covered well. And stopped at the 11, and a flag is down. Beautiful 45-yard kick from the freshman from Thermopolis, Wyoming, Don Bracken. His 42-yard average of Michigan season record this year. Uh, Kenny Gardner had positioned himself on this side of the field and headed back. I think there was a reverse in the mind for the Washington troops. But because of that high, lazy kick and excellent coverage, they were unable to get it off. While Michigan's band leads a celebration, and it's really good cause with Wolverines dominating play in the second half, let's not lose sight of the fact that that clock shows 11 minutes and 7 seconds remaining 
And Tom Flick showed us in the first half he can move the team quickly. He's going to have to start deep in his own end. A penalty has taken that ball back to about the three yard line. They do not announce the numbers of the athletes committing the fouls in collegiate football. Timeout. Washington from its own three yard line will start with 11 minutes and seven seconds remaining in this Rose Bowl game. Literally millions of those decorating the parade route in that glorious affair this morning here in Pasadena. And now it's Michigan who wants to smell the fragrance. They've got Washington back at their own three yard line. Wolverines lead 17 to six. And they surround the ball at the four yard line. Kyle Stevens, very little room to run. I tell you, those Wolverines are getting tough. I think they sense the victory in their grasp. 10-51, 10-50. They can pin Washington here, get the ball back, and eat some more of the clock with their running game. They can make it awfully tough on Don James and his Huskies. And we'll keep our eyes on that clock. 10-39, 10-38, 10-37 left. Fourth quarter. Sun setting behind the mountains. Lights are on at the Rose Bowl. Nybar, one of the tight ends in motion. It's Tyler. Tyler to the 22-yard line and a first down. Toussaint Tyler. 19-yard gallop. Let's see if Flick takes to the air. Jackson and Bodie made the tackle in the Michigan defense. Well, they needed a little room to operate. They now have that. Extra defensive back heading into the secondary for the Wolverines. They're expecting the pass here. Flick incomplete to Tyler, but he had to hurry his throw as pressure was coming. Robert Thompson, 99, blitzing in there. And in the early part of this game, the Washington offensive line and backs picking up the blitz effectively, having a little trouble doing it here. And that is not uh, one of the trademarks of the Michigan team to blitz on first down. They rarely do it, so that was a little surprise Bo had in store with a lead through that card. I think Bo pulled the stops in this one. Second and ten. Five defensive backs in for Michigan. Jeff Reeves, number 43, joining the other four. Flick. Good protection. Scancy, no good. He trapped the ball. Tremendous effort, but trapped the ball. Scancy does not have blazing speed, but he has excellent hands and runs a fine pattern. And this is one of the few passes that Flick has thrown badly all day. He just comes up a little short with the pass, unable to get it into the hands of his receiver. Just missed the ball and hands and grass all connecting incomplete 957 left now a big third and ten for Flick. Almost intercepted broken up by Paul Gergish the sophomore from Lakewood Ohio. So Michigan's defense gets a standing ovation. He is the strongest Wolverine at 6'1 and 205. He can bench press more than twice his weight. Carter is deep at the Michigan 40. It's returnable or not? No, late fair catch at the 38 yard line. Michigan's ball. The Wolverines now would like nothing more than a long, sustained, time consuming drive. 9.45 left. Michigan 17, Washington 6. Stay tuned for that Orange Bowl Classic. And for all of us at NBC Sports, uh, so many of our friends starting the new year. And tonight, especially on the West Coast, Maria, that lovely young Osmond, and her marvelous show. Happy New Year to Johnny Carson, Freddie DeCordova, and all the Tonight crew. Ed McMahon, our good friend. You bet.
We hope you'll stay with us here on NBC, of course, for our football coverage. Butch Wolfock, one of the few times he has not gained as Rusty Olsen. That's not a bad name for a football player, Olsen, and he's played well. Well, he has played very well, as has number 67, Mark Giroux. Very quickly around George Lilja, throws him to the ground, puts himself back in line to get some popping. You see the emotion there. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd want to pick on one of those six foot seven, 280 pound tackles, though. Ed Moransky. Oh, oh, Mark Giroux showed good brain power there, quick you, thinking. You've got to be selective. <laughs> Carter in motion. He's got running room. Anthony Carter to the Washington 43. Great block by Stan Edwards. Dick, at the very beginning of this day, we talked about three impressive things on this Michigan team. Their defense, which has been most impressive, especially in this second half. The second thing, uh, well, we'll hold for a second because there's the third thing right there. Number one, Anthony Carter. I said he was the most exciting player on the field. And he's proved to you why in this second half. Washington did a good job of containing him in the first half. They haven't been able to accomplish that here in the second half. Well, they've dipped into the New Jersey. They've got about uh, 10 more of those left, the tearaway jerseys. That's why they don't put Carter on the back, because it makes it so much more expensive. Edwards almost fumbled. He's to the 38-yard line. And that's another key to this game, Merlin, because Washington averaging so many fumbles per game during the course of the year, they've not forced Michigan to cough the ball up. Well, and the, <clears throat> the other thing that we talked about early on the Michigan side was their big offensive line. And I said then that it probably would pay bigger dividends at the end of the game. The Washington defense has been on the field so much this half that they're getting tired. And that physical advantage is really beginning to tell. Second and five. Carter in motion again. Now they give it back to Ricks. And he burrows to the 35. He'll be three yards short of the first down. Rusty Olsen. And Ken Driscoll made the tackle. Rusty Olson, but his number isn't quite right for an Olson. He's uh, wearing 64. You wore 74. Well, maybe he couldn't find 74 when he got there. Maybe somebody else is wearing it. You got to put your head in the defensive huddle with those Washington Huskies. They need a turnover right here. They've been effective at doing that during the season. They'd love to get an interception or a fumble. Get a turnaround here. Big play on third and three. And Wangler to Carter. Anthony Carter literally shut out in the first half. He has owned the second half. Well, there's a great saying, class will tell. And the class of this man, Anthony Carter, has certainly emerged here in the second half. He goes up to catch the ball, takes a real shot right there from Ray Horton, but he's not going to give it back to anybody. And a fine pass from John Wangler. Wangler doing a superb job of throwing here in the second half. Boy, great run of replays. Larry Cirillo, our producer. Eric Coyle, the director. Butch Wolfen to the 15-yard line. Our executive producer, Don Olmeyer. Well, we're pleased to have had the opportunity to call another Rose Bowl Classic. Anthony Carter, Merlin, second half after being shut out in the first half. Five catches, 68 yards, a touchdown, plus a couple of long runs. And what he did, even though he didn't catch the ball in the first half, who knows how many men he tied up covering him so that that left other people open. Well, that's been the pattern in many games for Michigan this year. He's been as much a decoy, an effective decoy, as he has been performer. First down at the Washington 16. Wolfick to the 10 and that power of the Michigan line just shoving Washington back. 6.30 left and Don James running out of time. He can ill afford for Michigan to score a touchdown here. A field goal would make it 20 to 6 and keep Washington within two touchdowns. But a touchdown would make it almost impossible. Just watching that Michigan offensive line, I can tell you this, they didn't earn all those Big Ten honors just by being big. They're playing excellent football. Ball at the nine-yard line. It's third and two. Very important play again. Carter. They can't catch him. He's got a 
Well, it's going to be close. He's going to be very close. Ken Gardner, 29, came up with a very sharp tackle at the seven, and that's where Carter had to go. The one danger of this kind of play is timing. The snap is early. The ball is actually thrown back to Carter. He actually has to go two or three yards to catch up to the point that the snap should have been made. He's late getting there, but his speed still allows him to get very close to the first down. It is not a first down by inches. What do you do? You take a timeout. Bo is signaling on the sideline. Timeout. <laughs> Bo Schembechler, a product of that fine football. There's his assistant coaches. Barberton, Ohio is Bo's hometown. Interestingly, Don James grew up in Maslin. They're the same age, 48. They're only 25 miles apart. They can't quite figure out whether or not they ever played against each other in high school. They both coached, of course, in the Mid-American Conference. Uh, Kent State for Don James, Miami of Ohio for Bo Schembechler, and now they meet again in the Rose Bowl for the second time. Their paths have crossed so many times. In fact, James was once an assistant coach at Michigan. Timeout, 538 left. It was my pleasure to cover that World Figure Skating, Professional Figure Skating Championship that will appear on seven weekends here on NBC. And don't miss it. If you love beauty and elegance, ballet and acrobatics, that's for you. They're going to go for it on fourth down and inches. Edwards, he's got it. First down and goal for Michigan. And not only the fans, but now the Michigan players begin to smell victory. You saw the effectiveness again of the decoy capabilities of Anthony Carter. He started across, and Michigan's defense had to see him coming. They didn't even fake to him. They just headed it up inside. But I'm sure his movement across the field had an impact on that defense. Michigan on another long drive as time runs out. Edwards carrying Washington tacklers with him to the three yard line. Fletcher Jenkins and Ray Kadich. It's second and goal. The Huskies, you'll recall at halftime, had a two to one edge in offense. Michigan not only has caught them, but surpassed that total. At the half, Washington had 269 yards. Michigan only 133. So it has been a dominant Wolverine offense in the second half. They've out first down Washington 13 to 3 as an indicator. Injured Jerry McLean is down. You hear the chanting of the maize and blue Michigan crowd led by their fine band. The Wolverines are on the doorstep again at the three of Washington. Second and goal with Michigan in front 17 to 6. Five minutes left. This is the 11th play of this drive. Carter in motion. Wolfuck stopped Ooh. at the two and quite a hit. Ray Cadditch has played very well in the second half. Number 61 of Washington with Mark Stewart, 38, helping out. Watch the pop here. We could hear this one all the way up here in the stands. That's Kenny Driscoll, number 40. He really put his helmet into the chest of Wolfuck coming in. Third and goal at the two yard line. Again, Carter in motion. Wangler going to run it. Didn't make it, but close. He stopped at the one yard line by Cadditch. Helped out by Steve Pope, 49, playing for the injured Jerry McLean. Fourth and one. Interesting note on Wangler. Bo has not allowed him to be tackled a single time in practice this entire year. Here he is running the football. Give you an idea how important this game is to John Wangler. I think there might, might have been something else there. It was Bo's way of saying to Wangler, you bow out with a touchdown in the Rose Bowl. You deserved it. We didn't think we'd have you in the first place. Fourth and goal at the one yard line with four minutes and five seconds left. Anthony Carter. I mean, how many. <laughs> you can do a whole game of ad libs about Carter. One of the interesting notes on him is the fact that Bo Schembechler obviously has such a love affair with this kid that the players kiddingly have tabbed Carter with a nickname Shimmy, <laughs> for, uh, as in young Schembechler. And uh, Carter's taken it well. He prefers the nickname Snake, and somehow that really fits his style. 
Well, this game certainly has reverted to the kind of script that Bo Schembechler would have written for it. The Wolverines have played stubborn and tough defense, and they've come back to dominate the game with their running attack. They've really played precise ball control offense in the second half. Drives of 83 yards, 83 yards. Both of those ended up in touchdowns, and this drive is well into the 60s already. Doesn't figure they'd go for the field goal because that would still leave Washington within two touchdowns of victory with a two-point extra point. If they miss uh, scoring a touchdown, they still leave Washington on the one-yard line, and they've got so much farther to go. A field goal allows Washington to take a kick, and you can break a long one in that open field running. So Michigan's going to go for it. Carter is to the left. Fourth and goal at the one. Ups offside, but Wangler really did move back and drew the team offside. Let's see against whom the penalty is called. Wangler gave a little more than sound. He pulled back. But they're calling it on Washington. A very emotional response from Anthony Carter. And I'm sure they were triggering they were counting on uh, the fact that the Washington Huskies were going to be dug in, that they were going to be trembling. Very often it's difficult to control that surge. It appeared that Wangler really pulled backward off center without the snap arriving, and that helped the Huskies offside. It's about a two-inch penalty. Fourth and goal again. in the West he's found that victory. Well, not only for Bo, but all of his players have suffered through with him, and they've been asked the question, what is wrong with Michigan? Why can't you win the big ones in the final games, in the Rose Bowl, in the Orange Bowl? They won't have to answer that question this year, Dick. Haji Sheik hooks it wide, no good, but it matters not with 402 left. Michigan has a 23-6 lead, and Don James needs not one, but a basket full of miracles to come back in so short a time. Bo Schembechler. Here's that last touchdown, and Edwards barely made it. It was a very close surge there. Tremendous defensive play by Washington. And I guess he was just suspended there over the goal line. 38, Mark Stewart. Mark's had an outstanding day for the defense. I'm sure it's got to be a painful and frustrating day for them. You talk about losing is never happy. But for a team that fought as hard and certainly played outstanding football through the first part of this game and has not quit the second part of this game, it's got to be a bitter pill for Washington. They played well, however, even though they've scored but six against this Michigan team. They had their opportunities in the first half. Aaron Williams will take the touchback. Just to review for those of you who joined us late, Washington three times in the first half marched inside the Michigan 20-yard line for the first down only to score one field goal. And that well could be the difference. And I'm sure the fans in the great Northwest could be moaning their faith. They'd say, hey, early in the game on fourth and one, one official signal touchdown, and it wasn't ruled a touchdown. The other official said he was stopped short. The same play just occurred at the other end, and Edwards just made it in. There's a 14-point swing there, and of course the debate will go on through the winner. First down of the 20 with 4.02 left. Tom Flick. Complete. Anthony Allen out to the 43-yard line. Michigan, of course, playing a safe, loose pass defense. Well, you've seen the happiness on the Michigan sidelines. For the Huskies, they know a long day is about to come to an end. Well, it's not over yet. They've still got a chance to maybe put another touchdown, maybe even two if they can get an onside kick. Flick has really been an effective passer today, although his 
passing has been limited. His opportunities have been limited by the Michigan defense here in the second half. Kyle Stevens in motion. Good protection. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Aaron Williams, the intended target, but one of the Michigan linemen got a hand on that one. One of the things I noticed about Flick in his passing drills, he tends to throw the ball a bit low at times. You get a chance to get your hands up on it. That's what happened on that particular play. The Bill Nicholas and all the people that have helped us on the Rose Bowl Committee and for all of the outstanding officials of the Tournament of Roses, our thanks from NBC Sports for your warm cooperation and friendship. It's been another delightful day for us. Flick throwing, he's got a man open. Aaron Williams, and he's out of bounds at the Michigan 31-yard line. And this is the kind of ball movement that Washington showed in the first quarter, but could only get three points out of three long drives. Tony Jackson made the tackle. That's the first catch for Williams. It goes 27 yards. Good little move to freeze the defensive backs, although they're being told right now, don't let anyone behind you. And they will trade yardage for time. They're looking up at the clock, 335. They know what their score is. And they'll even uh, they'll even give a touchdown if they have to, but they want that clock going. Well, they have another thing going, though. They like not to give up that touchdown. Incomplete at the 25. Stops the clock at 331. They're trying to make it five and a half games without allowing a touchdown. And again, they allowed only three touchdown passes all year. That's a remarkable. Well, we haven't had one today either, even as well as Flick has played and all the yardage that he's accumulated. He has not gotten the ball into the end zone for a touchdown, either by passing or running. We've had so much help with the booth today, and we'll acknowledge it later. Here's a statistic. Michigan has not allowed a touchdown in 330 minutes and six seconds. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the toss to Bale, and he falls at the 26 short yardage. Washington does not need that kind of yardage. Clock is running. Robert Thompson, 99, is still in the backfield of, Michigan, of Washington. Third down, about six yards to go. Clock is running, 308, 307. Flick has thrown the ball, Merlin, 38 times, completed 22. Less than three minutes left. Ball at the Michigan 27. Scancy. Oh, a tough catch in traffic, but I don't think he I has enough. I don't think he's got down. enough. I don't oh, either. He was very close to it, but very alert defensive play back there. Two defenders right on top of him. I think they shut him down short of it. Jeff Reeves on the tackle. The clock will continue to run. Fourth and one. Watch Scancy coming in right there. He's tackled the second he gets that ball. Geargash, one of the defenders, puts a hook on him. Fourth and about half a, half a yard to go there. If they don't make it, the game will be in Michigan's hands. They can just run out the clock. Williams right. Stevens breaks a tackle of Canavino, has a first down at the Michigan 18-yard line. I'd like to thank the men who have helped us in our booth, the player identification, Dennis Munition, Chuck Panama, Rick Bay of the University of Michigan, and Hugh Grew from the University of Washington. Thank you all. And for our master statistician, Joe Costanza, his assistants, Jack Prote and Arthur Hoffman. 23 to 6. Sun setting on the University of Washington's hopes. And for Bo Schembechler, it'll be daylight for a long, long time. 2.11 left. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen at the famed Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Kyle Stevens, who carried for the first down, helped off the field. A senior from San Jose, California, playing in his final collegiate game for the University of Washington and the Wolverines and the Huskies expressions tell it all that will force Toussaint Tyler to the tailback Nick. first down at the Michigan 17 flick looking into the end zone lost the ball Robert Thompson took it right out of his pocket the ball though is whistled dead Thompson goes into the end zone. It'll come back to the 31-yard line at the point where the fumble occurred. You cannot run with a fumble in college football. They wait a little bit of time, gets to the pros. Maybe he can do that, pick it up and take off. 70 yards for the exercise. Matt Hill tell his grandchildren all about that run. Well, we talked about his speed earlier. It's certainly apparent on that play. 
not only the speed he used getting to the end zone, but the kind of speed he used to get in and shake that football loose. But it is a fumble and not a pass incomplete, and Michigan has the ball, and now they can more openly celebrate with two minutes exactly left. They have the ball in a 23-6 lead. The Toyota Outstanding Players of today's Rose Bowl game are for the University of Michigan, Butch Wolfock, and for the University of Washington, Mark Giroux. Each Outstanding Player will receive a special Toyota trophy in honor of his achievements in today's game. In addition, Toyota donates $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both the University of Washington the University of Michigan for participation in today's game. Congratulations, Butch Wolfock, Mark Giroux, and Wolfock has also officially been named the player of this game. He'll go down in the record books as the MVP of the 1981 Rose Bowl. Gained 182 yards. That's his counterpart, Stan Edwards. You know, of all of the introductions before the game today, and some of the folks missed them, weren't you impressed by Stanley Edwards? He basically said, if we could paraphrase, uh, I want to thank everyone in my home city of Detroit to help me get as far along in life as I have. And he said, you're beautiful. I, he said it so well and uh, in such rich sensitivity that you had to admire the quality of the man. Just think back. It's Edwards again running out the clock. 1.23 left. And Washington exercises a timeout, or is that for the first down? It's for the first down. Edwards in his final game at the University of Michigan. He was the starter, as we said, as a freshman. When Washington defeated this Michigan team, he gained 74 yards that day. A lot of good football during this day, Dick. An awful lot of good football. And more to come. More than the score would indicate. It was an entertaining game. Two outstanding teams and both obviously well coached. We're down to the one minute mark. Timeout has been called by the University of Michigan. 58 seconds left. 23 to 6. Michigan leads Washington here in the Rose Bowl. They're getting ready in the Orange Bowl for a report. Let's go to Don Cricky in Miami. Thank you, Dick. We've got a great night in Miami, Florida for one of the great classics of college football. The Sooners of Oklahoma and the Florida State Seminoles set to go. Now we'll go back to the Rose Bowl and check that out as they conclude at Pasadena. But here in Miami, 76,000 are jamming the arena for this 47th renewal. The Seminoles of Florida State coming in with a 10 and 1 record. The Sooners are 9 and 2. They're both on seven game win streaks. And it is, of course, a rematch of last year's Orange Bowl. Now back to Dick Enberg. Thank you, Don. Back at the Rose Bowl, new quarterback for the University of Michigan, Steve Smith. He gives to Larry Ricks. And Ricks powers to the Washington 45. Clock stopped for another Michigan first down. The executive producer of the 1981 Rose Bowl has been Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer, Ted Nathanson. The telecast of this Rose Bowl has been produced by Larry Cirillo, directed by Harry Coyle, technical director Ray Fagelski, associate producer Peter Rolf, associate director Jim Marcioni, production manager Bob Gould, unit manager Angelica Marcus, and the production associate Rick Stern. Thank you all as Larry Ricks goes to the 40-yard line. 42, 41, 40 seconds. And the rest of the NBC Sports crew that have brought you this Rose Bowl game. Bo Schembechler allowing some of his reserves to finish out the game and hoping they'll have another opportunity to come back to Pasadena. That's Kerry Smith, a freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And that well could be the final play of this game. 10. 8 as the crowd picks up the count. Bo Schembechler finally takes a victory ride in Pasadena.
Michigan team that battled to a 7-6 first half lead, although outgained 2-1 to one by the University of Washington, and the Wolverines showing their superiority, dominated the game offensively with their strong ground attack in the second half to beat the University of Washington 23-6. And for the first time in 12 years in Michigan, Bo Schembechler will be able to think about his next year, the next six, seven months before a new season begins, and sit in the comfort of knowing he won his last game the year previous. Hail to the victors! And congratulations even to those in defeat. the beauty of this game you talk to the players and the coaches beforehand and to the man they say this is the realization of a, a long standing dream from the time that these players are kids they watch the Rose Bowl and they say someday maybe I can play in this big game and, and now they've accomplished that some are winners and some are losers in the scoreboard but the dream has been fulfilled but for this man he didn't want to wait another turn there was no jinx he said we just happened to lose five games between one and seven points. And he just had a feeling from Jim Beckler, the way his attitude changed. It was a different man that came to Pasadena, that he was going to come here differently, and he was going to go home with a different feeling. the Orange Bowl to follow Oklahoma and Florida State from Miami. Now let's get a feeling from the coach, the players from the victorious Washington team. Here's Merlin Olson. Coach, Coach Schembecker, finally it happened for you. That's right, and I'm, I've never been more pleased, Merlin. Uh, we've had um, a lot of great success in the Michigan football program, but we've never won this game since I've been there, and it's one of the greatest thrills of my life. If it had happened again, if you had lost again, do you think you would have relieved the talk about a jinx? Uh, uh, no, the jinx, there's no jinx here. We've always played hard. We've just come up a little bit short. This time we didn't. You had thanks, thanks to some of these guys. <laughs> you had a little magic from number one there. Tell me how important he was to you today. Anthony Carter um, has more effect on the game than any single player I've ever coached. And um, he may not look like it, and sometimes um, he's standing out there and nothing happens. But sooner or later, he gets it. Anthony, you were used as a decoy in much of the first half. Uh, in fact, you were shut out on the passing side of it. Did that bother you at all? Well, no, it didn't, because we, we, we figured it was going to happen, you know. So we went in, you know, at halftime and then said uh, everything was going to come my way pretty soon. So we just, you know, took it as it came. You certainly more than made up for it in the second half. We were kind of surprised, not really surprised, but uh, we watched you do some running from that position coming across. Did you enjoy being a ball carrier today? Well, yeah, I did. You know, like Coach Bo said, you know, I, I can do a lot of things, you know. All I got to do is just get the ball. We kept looking for you to throw a pass from that position. Was that something you might have done if this game had been a little closer? Well, yeah, I, I suppose to throw the pass, but Stanley out, he couldn't get out in the flats at times. So Coach Bo told me, you know, if I couldn't get the pass, just run it. Actually, two of those were passes. Yeah. Two of them were passes, yeah. and he ran. Congratulations to you. A wonderful victory, and I'm sure you'll carry it proudly back to Michigan with you. Thank you, Merlin. Thank you very much. It all began in 1902. Michigan beat Stanford that year. The first broadcast on NBC Radio was in 1927. You saw the first coast-to-coast -coast telecast of a football game on NBC in 1952 and the first color telecast in 62. The glorious tradition continues in the 67th game, the 92nd festival of the Tournament of Roses. The University of Michigan defeats a fine University of Washington team 23 to 6 for Merlin Olson. This is Dick Enberg again. Happy New Year, everybody. And stay tuned for more exciting college football action. NBC Sports will be bringing you the 47th annual Orange Bowl game. It's the second-ranked Florida State Seminoles in a heated rematch against the Big 8 champion Oklahoma Sooners right after these messages from your local station.
promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. United serves more of this land than any other airline. That's what Friendly Sky...